about to start the, with the prayers. Yeah. All right, everyone, let's rise, meditate in the prayers. Lord Sabbath. Shall I begin? The Lord's Prayer. Matthew chapter 6, verse 9. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, and we forgive our debtors, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. All praises to Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Amen. Ten Commandments, Exodus 20. And the Heavenly Father spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which I brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers, upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and show mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in the midst, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house, Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. All praise to Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, and Nazareth, we pray. Amen. Amen. Psalms 132. Lord, remember David and all his afflictions, how he swore unto the Lord and bowed unto the mighty God of Jacob. Surely, I will not come into the tabernacle of my house, nor go up into my bed. I will not give sleep to my eyes or slumber to my eyelids until I find out a place for the Lord and habitation for the mighty God of Jacob. Lord, we've heard of it at Ephratah. We found it in the fields of the wood. We will go into his tabernacles. We will worship at his footstool. Arise, O Lord, into thy rest. Bow in the ark of thy strength. Let thy priests be clothed with righteousness, and let thy saints Shout for joy. For thy servant David's sake, turn not away the face of thine anointed. The Lord hath sworn it in truth unto David. He will, not, he will not turn from it. Of the fruit of thy body will I set upon thy throne. If thy children will keep my, my covenant and my testimony that I shall teach them, their children shall also sit upon thy throne forever. For the Lord hath chosen Zion. He hath desired it for his habitation. This is my rest forever. Here will I dwell, for I have desired it. I will abundantly bless her provision. I will satisfy her poor with bread. I will also clothe her priests with salvation, and her saints shall shout aloud for joy. There will I make the horn of David to bud. I, all, I have ordained a lamp for mine anointed. His enemies will I clothe with shame. But upon himself shall his crown forge. Our praises to Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, and that's what pray. A month. Amen. The two great commandments, Matthew 22, 34. But when the Pharisees had heard that he had put the Sadducees to silence, they were gathered together. Then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question, tempting him, and saying, Master, which is the great commandment in the law, Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. 
and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments in all the law and the prophets. Our uh, praises, Heavenly Father, the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, for our coming together to worship and glorify your name and praise praise you upon the Sabbath day that your Holy Spirit may be upon us in the whole church, throughout the whole the whole world, that you may have mercy upon us and forgive us of all our sins, and that you may have mercy upon your saints and deliver us out of all our afflictions, the trials, tribulations, temptations, sicknesses, diseases, and elements that we face in this life, and that you may deliver us from the bondage of sins and from the hand of the wicked. In Christ's name we pray and believe. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Amen. 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 Be seated. Peace and blessings, everyone. Happy Sabbath. Also, to our brothers and sisters currently already in the midst of the new moon Sabbath, bless new moon Sabbath as well. So, Lord will we'll go over a brief lesson, and then we'll um, end the lesson by going over the scriptures pertaining to the new moon Sabbath, since we are uh, keeping a two, two um, consecutive Sabbaths back to back. So, the seventh day Sabbath, and then leading tonight at the going down of the sun until the new moon Sabbath. So, double Sabbath this weekend, all praise. So today's topic, Lord willing, we'll go into a few scriptures um, pertaining to walking in wisdom toward them that are without. So that's the topic. And that's a topic that's never out of time, out of place, or out of season. Because as Christ walked, so ought we to walk. So we'll begin with uh, Colossians, the fourth chapter. Verses 5, and we'll also read verse 6. So again, the topic is walk in wisdom towards them that are without. So we'll read it here in Colossians 4 and 5. Okay, so it reads, walk in wisdom toward them that are without, redeeming the time, all right? So this walking in wisdom is going into living every aspect of our life, right? Our, our conversations, our thoughts, our actions, you know, our interactions with people, where we go, what we do, how we dress, how we eat, everything that we do, right? For, from the company we keep, every single aspect of our life, the scripture says, is to be done in wisdom, and then also keeping in mind that not just in the presence of ourselves, our, ourselves being the saints, right, the elect that the Most High through Christ is calling to the truth, but just as important as this verse to bring it out here, it says, toward them that are without, right? So when it says without, meaning without the body of Christ, right? They still walking in sins, they still, by they meaning the children of Israel, that has yet to repent in the truth of Christ. That could be our loved ones, be it our fathers in the world, mothers in the world, brothers, sisters, cousins, aunties, uncles, right? Your friend, friend that we, we had in, in, in our past life in this world that may still be walking, right, and being in agreement and conforming to this world. Well, when we're in their presence, we're not to change. That's what the scripture is explaining here, right? We're not to be living like two separate lives, right? On the one hand, they know of us as being Christians, right? Followers of Christ, servants of Christ. Or they should know based on our conversations with them, right? I'm sure they'll, they'll, see, they'll see a change in you as far as in your behavior, in your conversations, the things that we used to do, right? Be it celebrating birthdays of fake holidays of this world, right? That that's going towards idolatry, right? That's, that's dealing with breaking the most high's commandments. Beginning with the first commandment, thou shalt have no other gods before me, right? And then making and making and the worshiping of these idols. Right? That's what all these world's holidays is tied to, right? Paganist, paganistic holidays, right? Devil days. But in the world, in our time, in times past, before we knew 
the knowledge of the truth. We follow most after Christ had mercy upon us and call us in his faith. We did these things, right? We were like them. By like them meaning we were conforming to the ways of this world. Right? Fornicating, dealing idolatry, thinking whatever thoughts we wanted to think, you know, doing whatever we felt like doing without double checking with the most high through Christ out of the scriptures, right? To make sure that whatever we was getting our hands into was pleasing to the most high, right? Was in agreement, was, was conforming to the ways of the most high instead of conforming to the world, right? And the latter part of the verse says, redeeming the time, right? So what does it mean to redeem the time? If we walk in wisdom, right, beginning with the man in the mirror, and then also in the presence of those that's without the truth, right? Be beginning with the children of Israel and not limited to them, but the whole world, right? We're not to behave in a way like it tells us, like in um, Corinthians 13, right? Charity, right? When we're dealing with charity, we're not supposed to behave unseemly, meaning out of character. Our, our character, our example is supposed to be built upon Christ, right? So now, does that mean when we're amongst the nations, right? Be it Esau, the so-called white man, the Chinese, the other nations. Now we're calling them devils. We we acting up. We acting a fool. We being disrespectful. Right? We being obnoxious. No, when it says without, meaning towards all men. You didn't. You don't read in the scriptures where Christ in the presence of, of Pilate, right, or Herod, or or, or, or Esau, the, the the Romans at the time. That's the name it was going with by during Christ's ministry. You don't hear him where he was cutting up amongst the nations and then giving the most high a bad example right so that's the same path that's the same blueprint we'll follow right so the question goes back to the latter part of the verse is redeeming the time what does it mean to redeem the time as we walk in, in the wisdom of the most high through christ right because that's the wisdom right it's not the wisdom of this world because we know what's what what's this world's wisdom dealing with Foolishness, right? It tells us in the scriptures the, the, the wisdom of this world is foolishness with the most high, right? Whether you got a degree or you educated or, or you self taught, if it's not built around the scriptures, if it's not patterned around the, the scriptures, right, that we've learned of the most high through Christ, then it's, it's foolishness with the most high, right? <clears throat> Be it how you're going to behave as a man, as a woman, right? as a husband, as a wife, as children, right, amongst people in this world, if it's not built upon the scriptures as the foundation, right, it's, it's foolishness, it's wickedness, right? So the latter part of us is redeeming the time, that's going into making up for lost time, right? The lost time is before we knew the knowledge of this truth, what type of state were we in? Right? What type of state were we in as a people? And there's a there's a good scripture that goes well. There's a couple. Let's let's get um, Ephesians four is a good one, but let's let's get um, well, I should say Ephesians the second chapter. But let's get um, let's go to Romans thirteen, and then this whole um, this Colossians four. We'll come back to it, but before then. Let's go to Romans 13, right? And let's see. Let's jump down to verse 11. So since we're talking about redeeming the time, let's establish which time we live in, it, right? Let's see if we're living in the time to, to, to party, get your groove on, to, to fornicate, to, to live life to the fullest according to this, this world, right? Which is based on, on on carnality, carnality going into wickedness, abominations, breaking the Most High's commandments. Right. So let's first and foremost establish which time we live in, and then that's going to give us the understanding as far as when the Scripture says in, in Colossians four, redeeming the time as we walk in amongst people in this wicked world. Right. Because that's the the, the world we're living in, and we're going to read it. Romans 13, verse 11, and we'll read it to the end of the chapter. It says, And that knowing 
the time, right? That now, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep, right? So the Apostle Paul, writing this letter to the church in Rome, he's saying, and that, and that knowing the time, right? So meaning we should know what time we live in, it, right? And mind you, this was when Rome was still in power, right? The, 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 the fourth kingdom to rule, the fourth and last kingdom, right? And it tells you that the Most High sent Christ in the last days to redeem Israel from their sins, right? So we're talking hundreds and hundreds, thousands of years ago, right? At least 2,000 years ago. And Paul is saying that now, right, knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep, right? And so we're going to read up, we're going to let the scriptures explain, like, what time is it referring to, like, what 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 time in this 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 world that we live in? Is it time to rejoice in wickedness or is it time to repent? Let's continue. It says, so it's saying that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. Right. So if Paul is establishing that it's time to awake out of sleep, right? And he's writing a letter to the believers in Christ. It's letting us know that what we should no longer be in, in slumbers, right? To be in a state, but he's speaking symbolically, right? This is not a, a physical sleep where in the morning your alarm clock goes off and okay, now it's time to get up. Now it's time to, you know, wash up and then get to work, right? This is symbolically a, 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 a time in which he's going to make a separation between righteousness and wickedness, right? And we're going to see what's, what's being promoted in this, this world, right? Based on the time that Paul was speaking. Right? And then he said, for now is our salvation nearer than when we believe, right? So when he says now, right? What time frame is the now going into? The end of times, time, right? The last days, right? That's why when Christ began his ministry, he was teaching, mm -hmm. right? Beginning with what? Repent. <clears throat> For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So the time to be in a state of asleep, asleep meaning that we're not thinking about the Most High, we're not thinking about Christ, we're not thinking about the kingdom and the righteousness in this kingdom, right? And everlasting life for the righteous. When we're in that, that mode, when we're not mindful of the resurrection, we're not mindful of eternal life, well, we're in a state of asleep, right? Because one way or the other, whether we acknowledge it or not, this world is not going on forever, right? And that's that's the beauty of the Most High's program. We're not going to hasten it, and then we're not going to delay it, right? We're not, just because you haven't seen the light yet, you haven't woken up to the truth of Christ, don't mean now Most High's judgment is going to go void, right? Most High's going to delay based on the majority of this world, right? Because Christ said many's called, but few is going to be chosen. So is the many that's going to stay in, the, in their darkness going to delay Christ's coming? No. Right? And so for the believers, the exhortation is what? We should already been knowing what time we're living in. <laughs> we're living in the last days. Right? We're living in a time where the Most High is getting ready to shut down this wicked kingdom. And that already started from the time that Christ entered into the world. Right? During his ministry. Right? Just in case some people were, oh, it's been... Thousands of years, right, since this was written. And the world still goes on. Everyone's living life like they want to live it. Well, Most High's judgment is not going to be hindered, right? That doesn't mean anything. Right? It's just a, that's, that's just the Most High of the Scripture tells us in Peter. Most High's extended his mercy, right, in regards to when all Israel, as far as the, the believers, the elect, is sealed. Then Christ is going to get that green light from the Most High, bring forth that judgment. And then deliverance into the righteous. Right? And so the latter part of verse 11 says, For now is our salvation nearer, right, than when we believe. <laughs> See? So every day that goes by, we one day closer, right? From, from Adam till now, we just that much closer. We don't know the day and hour, right? But we have that faith and we believe that what? Most high is not a man that he should lie. Right? He's promising to those that believe him that, that, 
that stay in the faith of Christ, right? And endure. Hardness is a good soldier. Well, the blessing is whether we live to see it or whether we fall on asleep. And then we hear them trumpets blowing at, at Christ's second coming. And then, Lord willing, we, we are amongst the dead in Christ to be risen, right? To live eternally. When the judgment goes out, we want to hear, well done, my good and faithful servant, and to you in paradise. Right? As opposed to Christ saying, I never knew you. But, but Christ, we prophesied in your name, and, and we've done good works and miracles and charitable deeds. Well, if you're not, if you wasn't doing it in, in truth and sincerity, Christ knows it. And it's going to be revealed at his coming. Right? And so let's read verse 12. The night is far spent. Right? The day is at hand. See? And so the comparison is going to be made with night being what? Let's read on. That's why we see the, the, the two dots there after hand. Meaning, Paul is going to expound on what he's meaning by the night is far spent, the day is at hand. It says, let us therefore cast off what? The works of darkness. See? So if you replace the night with the works of darkness, Paul is basically explaining it unto the believers of Christ that what? Living a life of sin is far spent. You've, you've been engaging in that far too long, right? Which we should have never been engaging in it to begin with, right? But through the Lord's mercy, you understand that what? It was in our ignorance that we was partaking in this foolishness, in our idolatry, right? The fornication, the hatred, the murder, Right? The speaking evil, despising the Most High, despising Christ, right? Hating on the elect of the Most High through Christ, right? So Paul is saying, cast off the works of darkness because you've been indulging in that far too long, right? And if we continue in sin, we know what? The wages of sin is that, right? So we try the Most High's power. Scripture says what? He reproved the unwise. There's only so far the Most High will allow us, right, to think that we're getting away in our sins. That's why in Ecclesiastes it mentioned that what? In our security, right? We're going to be what? Punished. We're going to be destroyed. We walk in, hey, I've been doing sins and who cares about the scriptures, the Sabbath and, and believing on Christ? I'm living my life. Well, keep thinking that way. And then and, and, and think that the Most High's mercy is going to be extended even in your sins and, and to bless you with the kingdom at Christ's coming. Well, you didn't do anything that was deserving of it, right? Remember, Ezra said, for the empty is what? Full? What did Ezra say for, in regards to the empty, meaning the, the wicked of Israel? For the empty is what? Empty. And for the full is full. So you, you live your life, right, in, in dealing with repentance and bringing forth the fruits of repentance? Well, our hope is what? The full. The kingdom of heaven, eternal life. Whereas the wicked, they weren't minded of the, the righteousness of the Most High that's going to be established when he brings, establishes his kingdom on, the, on this earth. Well, since you was never mindful of it, how is that going to be your expectation? When you see Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, all the righteous going in, right? And then you see yourself thrust out. Well, you, you didn't believe in it. They're, they're the ones that was making mockery, right, of the truth of the Most High through Christ. And laughing and, and then... Life was a big old joke, a, a party, right? The party goes on. Well, it's going to be wrapped up soon. That's what Paul is going into and saying that for now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. That's the latter part of verse 11. But he said in 12, if the night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness. And then in regards to the day being at hand, what is that going into? And let us put on what? The armor of light. So who, who is the armor of light that we should be putting on? Christ, right? It's not knowledge of self or man-made philosophies or doctrines, <laughs> traditions of men, right? Your elders teaching you something contrary to the scriptures and, and then you put more energy into that to promote that, right? Whereas the truth of Christ, you put that to the side. We're supposed to be putting on who? Our life is supposed to be revolving around who? Who, who, is, who is the light? Christ, right? Isn't that what um, um, you read it in the Gospel of John? In regard that who was the light? Was it Satan? Was it Lucifer? 
Was it the so-called white man and his, his devil doctrines and knowledge? No, Christ is the light, right? And so, if we dealing with anything outside of Christ, what are we still in, right? Darkness. That's that's what the opposite of that is, right? Turn into darkness, meaning conforming to the, the ways of life, according to how men are living and, and believing in, and and and, and they just eating it up, right? What, what's the, the newest thing under the sun? What's the latest trend? What's the latest conversation? What's the latest uh, fornicating music or movies or entertainment that, that's got nothing to do with the Most High through Christ? That's what's being pushed out and, and promoted in this world. Right? Whereas the believers, we're supposed to be what? Putting on the armor of, of light, meaning putting on Christ. Our whole life is supposed to be revolving around Christ. Right? As Christ walked, so ought we to walk. What he promoted, what he taught unto Israel, the the the, co the covenants that he re received with the Most High, right? The doctrine that he received with the Most High, the commandments that he received with the Most High, that's what we're supposed to be about. By we meaning the believers of Christ, the true Christians. So verse 13, let us walk honestly as in the day, right? Right? So if if we walk in as in the day and we replace in the day being with who? As the armor of light, being Christ. Was was Christ about dishonesty? Being a hypocrite? He, he said one thing but did the other. He, he quoted the most high commandments and then but then when you saw Christ, you saw a different person. Like you didn't know what type of person you were gonna get out of Christ. Christ changing like the weather. Was that what Christ was about? No. Christ was about what? Serving the Most High in truth and sincerity. Not only did he taught it, but he walked it. He was a living example, right? Of the, of the truth of the Most High. And it says, not in writing. See, so it's going to explain to us what the walking honestly, right? As in the day meaning, as, as we put it on Christ, as we being born again in Christ, which is a daily process, right? As we walking in Christ, as we putting on the new man, right? Renewed in the spirit of the Most High through Christ, we're supposed to be diminishing or cast off, that we no longer entertaining. You know, the old man, right? And then what's some of the works of the old man? Let's read it. Not in rioting and drunkenness. <laughs> so what would the, some of the examples of, of rioting and drunkenness could go into, based on how the things we see promoted in this world? Not just only in America, but throughout the whole world. Wicked the wicked holidays, right? One of them, right? Whether you're talking Fourth of July, Christmas, Thanksgiving, right? It's about what fulfilling the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, right? Over drinking, right? Drunkenness—that's what that drunkenness is going to. And overeating, right? Not only feasting, right? But then you feasting in, in the name of another God. Right? That's what Theo was going into when we dealing with these, these these false holidays, right? That has nothing to do with the high days that the most high established as far as Sabbath days out of the scriptures, right? So when you're talking Mardi Gras, right? Isn't that the, a, a, a main event, a, a, a big deal when it comes to partying and in, in, in excess, right? Drinking. Like partying and dealing in fornication, and then not only what comes out of that, people dealing in hatred, murder. That'd be the biggest days where you hear about women getting raped, people getting shot, right? People fighting each other, people dealing in drugs, and people getting high, people getting killed, right? All in the name of what? Serving another god, right? But these are the things that what we took pleasure in when we were in the world. I'm like, hey, there's a there's a party tonight. This club is jumping. This is gonna go on till four or five in the morning, right? And then not even going to bed, not even getting sleep. You right go from the, the club to your job, and then Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. I mean, it's a, it's a revolving cycle, right? Always looking for the the next high, right? The the next reveling, the next party. Constant foolishness, right? Which is, as we partake in it, that is, is, is further and further what divided us between the Most High. 
right? Well, when the truth of the Most High comes out, because we've just been so engaged in the foolishness, so a lot of our people, is that's all they know. They can't see themselves stopping with the fornication, stopping with getting high, stopping with, you know, putting it off as far as the drunkenness. But we know through Christ, right, we could do all things. Because some of us took pleasures in these things, right? Paul was a murderer at one point. Was, was Paul above repentance? I mean, by, not above, but beyond repentance? Like, there's no hope? Can, can, can we say that about any man that, that, that's putting on Christ? Our scriptures tell us that what? When, when we born again in Christ, all, old things are passed away, right? All things will become new. That's what we're reading here. So, if all things are becoming new, what's some of the old things that has to be put off? Well, that's what we're reading right now. Not in writing, in drunkenness, right? And then it says, not in chambering and wantonness, right? So what's that specifically dealing with when we talk about chambering and wantonness? The word chamber is in there, chamber. If you're talking about a chamber, what type of location? A room, right? Like a, a place, right? A building, right? Whether it's a house, whether it's an apartment, whether it's a, a, a club, right? But when you tie in it with, it says chambering and wantonness, when we're dealing with the works of the flesh, what is that going into? Lasciviousness. That's a, that's a good example. But it's a lasciviousness, right? Excessive lust, right? Dealing more on, on the sexual nature, right? Like first scriptures tell you in regards to when, when um, what's the one in Ecclesiasticus? Um, the one that says every um, all bread is sweet to a whole monger, right? And the scripture saying, I'm not saying verbatim, where it mentions that he will not stop until um, Osiris speaks about that fire is put out. Like that fire meaning he's going to be put to death. Because to some people, it's just like, I can't stop fornicating. I can't stop laying down with another man's woman. Right? Or, or fornicating, period. Right? But we're talking about in a way where now it's, it's excessive. From one partner to the next to the next and then this world downplays it with with these type of names right these type of, of descriptions to where it doesn't appear as sin right and then when a, a child comes out oh that's a love child wait a minute this woman bed that child in the midst of fornication right so how's that a love child the, the, the scripture speaks about the husbands love your wives and then the, and then the, the scripture speaks about what the wife she that what She's in, she reverences her husband. Now, how are we talking about a love child coming out of uh, somebody else in the midst of that, that marriage, coming in to break that marriage? And we're not talking the woman was was raped against her will. She, she consented to it, right? But this world downplays it, right? And then they don't talk about when, when a man or a woman go outside of that marriage and deal with fornication, as in adultery. They don't call it adultery. Adultery is kind of like the last. Adultery only comes to play when now we're talking. Well, let's go to court, right? And then we're talking when money comes into it, right? Dividing the possessions, and then who's going to get the kids? Now, it's each of the party, whether the man or the woman, they're trying to make a case where, oh yeah, now it's adultery, right? Only when we're talking about possessions, but they're not. They're not looking at the the bigger picture, right? The sanctity of the marriage that the Most High, when He created Adam and Eve from the beginning, right? Made him to be one flesh, right? For life. Divorce was never supposed to be part of that 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 equation. At some point, oh, you get tired of each other. You you see somebody else that you like more. Okay, let's let's call it uh, quits. Whether you formally get a divorce in this wicked world or they do it behind each other's backs, right? So we talking. That's what the scriptures bring it out here. Not in chambering and wantonness, right? And it could be done in so many different ways. Right, one night stands, hook up, going to the club, going to strip bars, men dealing with with with, with harlots, right? Prostitutes, right? All this is tying into what? Going out, going outside of the sanctity of marriage, and then dealing in what? Adultery and fornication. So these are the things that these are the works of the old man that what? We supposed to what? Like the scripture says, the night is far spent. For those that did it, we should no longer be taking pleasure into it. These are the things that we're supposed to ask the Most High for 
for mercy and forgiveness. And now what? We don't do, we don't revisit the, the, the works, the actions of the old man anymore. See now that what? We're putting on the armor of light. We're putting on Christ. And so the latter part of verse 13 says what? Not in strife and envy, right? So when we read in, in James, right? In James, the third chapter, and also goes into the fourth chapter. When we deal in, in, in strife and envy, what, what type of spirit is that dealing with? Right? What is strife, first of all? Is that strife between a man and his brother, a man and his wife? You know, amongst the church, we, we deal in strife. What did you say? That's contention, anger. That's contention, anger, right? We're arguing, right? Get angry, right? One person get offended, okay? Well, the one that's offended, see that what? Stay in the spirit, right? Because Satan wants two people to go off, right? The scriptures tell us what? what be angry what, and sin not, right? That's the future of the fourth chapter. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. But now if we're dealing with the spirit of, of, of strife, now at the drop of a dime, you, you go off the handle, get angry. You, you're soon angry, right? You're short, you're short tempered, short spirit, where any little thing, you fly off the handle. And then now you're just yelling, arguing, right? Dealing in anger, right? Raffle. The scriptures tell us that what? Um, be, let every man be what? Swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath, right? Because what? The wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of the most high, right? I want to say that's what James, uh, the first chapter, in regards to where be slow to speak. If you slow to speak, what are you doing? You're listening, right? And not only listening, but you also what? Meditating upon the most high's commandments. Okay, now how would Christ deal with a situation like that? When Christ was being provoked, right? Did Christ get upset, get angry, get get short spurt, or or or, or lose patience? Uh, Pharisees again. This is the third time today. Okay, I'm through with y'all. Throwing chairs at them, tables at them, right? Getting getting uncontrollable as far as, far as you know, being vengeful and, and wrathful. No, oh, Christ didn't deal like that. Christ meditated with the Most High, and then he brought out the fitting scriptures to address the situation. And when Christ responded, no man could come back with, with any rebuke or, or, or any type of accusations to say, oh, wait a minute, Christ, that was out the spirit. That's not the commandments. Or find fault with Christ's answer, because his answer was based on the Most High's answer. Right? And so we not to deal in the spirit of strife. And Satan's going to attempt to bring that within us, amongst us, right? Whether a man in his household, his wife, whether you're single, you're married, married with children, amongst the church, right? We might not agree on something. Wait a minute, so what's, what's, how do we solve that disagreement, right? We don't see eye, eye to eye on certain things. Okay, how, how do we get it to where now, well, Let's get the most eyes, the most highest answer, right? Let's resolve the script, the, the situation out of the scriptures as opposed to getting angry, right? And then dealing with the spirit of, of, of malice, hatred. And then it comes out where now we speak in evil, right? And then we render an evil. You said this, I'm going to say something worse. You offended me, I'm going to offend you the, the same or worse, right? That's the spirit of the old man that we're not supposed to be doing. That's why it says not in strife. And then the latter part of the verse says and envying. Right? That's why the scripture speaks about whether it's strife and envying. What type of works is being manifested there? Every evil work. Right? So it, it began with, you know, person said something that, you know, got under your skin. Right? That got you upset. That got you angry. It was an offense. Okay? Should the person have offended you? In words or deeds? No. Now, how do we deal with it? Galatians, uh, the sixth chapter, right? If one's overtaken in a fault, it says he which are spiritual. See, the key to it, you have to be spiritual. If you're not in the spirit at that moment, what? What did you say? What did you do? Man, and then now the scripture's out the door. 
you you dealing with the the situation with your spirit and our spirit without the Most High, void of the Most High through Christ is what dealing with Satan, right? Now we dealing with with we get emotion. We we dealing with with being carnal, right? Whereas if we apply in Galatians six, it says you which are spiritual restore such an one in what in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, right? And so if we come in and in, in being in the spirit of the most high through Christ, I'm going to come with a meek spirit, with a humble spirit. You know, I'm going to consider, okay, is this, yeah, the person did a wrong, whether it's my wife, right? Whether it's another brother or another sister, you know, uh, brothers and sisters married with children, they're going to have that understanding. Okay, I have to come with, with love. I have to come with compassion. I have to come with mercy. The correction is just, it's still got to come out, but it has to be done in a way where it's going to be what edifying. It's going to restore the person as opposed to make the situation worse. Now you're sparking a fire to where now you're going into a, a bigger problem that could have been easily resolved had beginning with one person and then praying, like the scripture said, praying for one another that what? Okay, the person that's in the wrong see themselves. And then they confess that false and then you know what? That's the scriptures. I was in the wrong. Forgive me, brother, or forgive me, sister. Right? And so, scripture says, not in envy. When we're dealing in envy, it's going into what? Having having a, a spirit of, of what? Of, of, of hatred, right? Covetous, right? Despising one another. Not seeing the good, not seeing Christ in one another, but but seeing the worst. Yeah, you, this brother, yeah, you, I know that brother. Yep, he's the type to do that. You know, we're already thinking evil. We're already having that, that evil surmising, right? We're already making assumptions. We didn't even hear out the matter. Okay, maybe the brother has a, 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 a tendency or has a, a, a name in Israel, right, where he's not applying the scripture. Well, there's still hope for him, right? Because who, who are we that, you know, to, to judge a man? Uh, to the most high, he stands or falls, right? All we could do is bring out the scriptures in spur of meekness and then pray for the brother, pray for the sister, that what? They, they deceive themselves, right? And that they may recover out of the standard devil. But if we're dealing in the spirit of strife and envy, are we going to make the, the matter any better? Are we going to are we going to resolve it in, in the right spirit? No. If anything, now Satan's going to get his foot in the door and then now escalate the issue. Right? Verse 14. So instead of dealing in rioting, drunkenness, chambering, wantonness, the strife and envy, verse 14 says, but, see, instead, right? But put you on the Lord Jesus Christ. See, that, that's who the armor of light is. That, that's who our example is. That's the author and finisher of our faith. That's who we're supposed to be patting ourselves after, right? Christ wasn't about any of these things, the works of the flesh that we read here, right? And that's just some of them to name a few, that Paul in the spur went into. You don't read about Christ where he was caught up in in, in, in some devil days that, that the Greco-Roman Empire was promoting. Oh, today's Caesar's birthday. Let's get into a celebration and get buying gifts and all this foolishness. Did you hear Christ promoting that? No. You don't hear Christ where he's dealing in, in fornication, dealing with harlots, dealing with prostitutes, right? Or dealing in strife and envy. Like, who's that in the background? Is that Christ yelling, getting angry, getting upset, getting out the spirit, cursing people out? No, oh, that was not named once when it came to Christ. Right? So it should not be named once amongst us. Right? But we're in the process, right? So it's 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 a, a work in progress when it comes to us becoming that new man, that new woman in Christ. Right? Especially for the ones of us that you know, repented, got baptized for remissions of sins, and then we, most of our praises through his mercy, we are still in his faith. It don't mean that now we beyond, you know, repentance or when it comes to the drunkenness, that we don't have to be on guard when it comes to that. Because right? we could be having a get-together, right, in righteousness. Brothers are having a little get-together or something, you know, praising the Most High for his blessing. Hey, I'm going to have a cookout at my house. You know, there might be some drinks there, right? Wine there. 
All right, still be mindful, don't drink in excess. Right? Very easily, you go above and beyond what you're able to handle, and then now you're falling out, right? You're slurring in your speech, you're lusting, you get angry, you get into arguings, right? And then you get in your car, and then you hear about the brother getting an accident or something like that. Because what? He drunk in excess. So just because we haven't done it, don't mean that we don't have to be... Because then why, Paul, why, why would Paul write that? Like there's always that aspect where Satan's going to try to what? Draw us back out there in the world. And he's going to use whatever means that, that, that he can right, to, to, to try us. Right, to try to get us to go out the spirit and break the most high commandments. So we always have to be sober. Sober, not just like as far as physical sober, but first and foremost, mentally sober, spiritually sober. Right? And then now when we're dealing with overeating, over drinking, right? Get into sufficing, getting into the drunkenness, we mindful of the scriptures. Right? So verse 14 says, But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision. For the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. See, so when you make a provision, you making you making moves, you making avenues, right? Like you provision, like a man's going on a journey. Okay, you're gonna make sure. Okay, we're gonna be on this journey for thirty days, right? Do we have enough food? Do we have enough water? Do we have enough supplies? Well, don't make supplies. What for the to, to promote the works of the flesh, right? Like in the world, we. We was planning foolishness months ahead, right? Gonna go here, you're gonna party, you're gonna do this, gonna fornicate, I'm gonna be wearing this outfit, I'm gonna hook it up with this person, that person. That's making provision for the flesh, right? Where, where, like, it goes into that, that parable, I wanna say it's in, um, I wanna say Matthew 12, where Christ was speaking about where, when that spirit, that, that evil spirit leaves a man, and then the spirit wanders off, right? And then he doesn't find a place to rest. But then the Spirit says he's going to come back to the former place that he left. So Christ symbolically is referring to, well, when we were born again through Christ, we got baptized, right? And we begin in that process of becoming that new man, that new person in Christ. Well, yeah, that Spirit is almost at bay. The Spirit hasn't fully left because we're still in the flesh. We're still in a wicked world, right? Everything around us is promoting wickedness, right? So if, if for one moment we put our guard down, that spirit comes back, knock on the door. Who is it? Fornication. Who is it? Idolatry. Who is it? Hatred. Who is it? As you read here, strife, envy, checking, right? And you suppose, man, catch yourself. See, that was Satan right there. All praise the most high through Christ. I could have easily been given over to strife, right? This was a situation where you may have got offended, right? Your first reaction, if we deal in, in a worldly state, now you get angry, you yelling, right? You, you, you're getting very defensive, right? To where your feelings are hurt, and then now you're not going for that. Whereas a new man in Christ, wait a minute, that wasn't right, what was said or done. That hurt, right? But the scripture says, well, you forgive your neighbor the hurt that was done. And forgiving, we can't bypass correction, right? Because the, maybe the, like the scripture says the person didn't know he said or done it, right? Or it could be a case where they fully knew they said or did it, they slipped with the tongue, whatever. They still sin, but there's that hope for what? Repentance. There's that hope for them to, you know, be given mercy and forgiveness from the Most High through Christ, first and foremost. But you got to give that opportunity as opposed to what? React out the spirit, dealing in strife and envy, and now two people are going off. Right? As opposed to one being spiritual and then restoring that one that was in the fault in the spirit of meekness. Right? So the scriptures tell us we're supposed to be what? Working on daily, right? This is a daily thing. When it says put on, but put you on the Lord Jesus Christ. Right? Is that the, the, the day that we got baptized? Whether it was last year, five years ago, ten years ago, last week? No, that putting on Christ is, is a lifelong process. Every day we're waking up, we're throwing up the prayers, okay? We're going to be facing this wicked world like we read in, in verse 11, knowing that time, right? Although we 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 coming out of that darkness, is the world coming out of that darkness too? No, they, they're pushing that darkness like like there's, there's no tomorrow. 
every day the world is getting worse and worse, right? So every day we're supposed to be what? Getting stronger and stronger in the most high through Christ. That way we may be able to withstand the wiles of the devil. And when Satan's coming with idolatry, fornication, strife, anger, all the works of the flesh, we growing stronger and stronger, stronger. That's why the scripture says, put you on what? The armor of light. That armor is what? It's, it's your protection, right? From like from your head all the way down to your toes. You, you fully protect it. Satan comes at the knees, you protect it. He comes with your arms, your chest, your head. Christ is everywhere. When you meditate upon the scriptures and what? Stay strong in the scriptures and rebuking the devil. The scripture says what? When we submit ourselves to the Most High, the next part of says what? Resist the devil. See, it's, we can't submit ourselves to the Most High and then still try to hold on to the ways of the world. One got to give. Right? Either we're going to wholly and fully serve the Most High through Christ or we're going to serve Satan. It can't be a combination of both. Right? And so the latter part of the verse is make not provision for the flesh right, to fulfill the lust thereof. See, the lust of the flesh. And Paul is speaking here to who? The believers. The repentant of Israel. The ones that the Most High through Christ has called on to this faith to be saved. Right? You're supposed to acknowledge, okay, the, the, the life of, of wickedness, darkness, fornication, idolatry. We should have never done that to begin with. Let's throw up the phrase that Most High have mercy and forgive us, but let's not revisit it. Let's not go back. Right? So let's go, let's go back to uh, Colossians 4. Colossians 4. Now we have verse 6. So as we walk in wisdom, right, beginning in our homes, right, and then extend it to the church, and then in the times that we will be in the world, right? We're going to be in the world. We're not of the world, but we still deal with the world, right? We still engage in the world. We work in the world. We have family and, and friends and, and people that, that we know of in the world, right? Whether well, it's dealing with, with our people or the other nations, the scriptures tell us that what? We will walk in wisdom, right? Meaning walking in the application of Christ, put you on the Lord. As we read in, um, in um, the, the scripture that we just left off. Why am I forgetting? Romans 13. <laughs> I got so many scriptures in my head. At the, uh, Romans 13. Beginning with uh, 11. Verse 6 now. So it says, Let your speech always with, well, let your speech be always with grace. Right? Season with salt that you may know how you ought to answer every man. See, so where, where is the Apostle Paul getting this wisdom in regards to our speech be always, I mean always be with grace. And then it says season with salt. Is it talking about the, the actual salt, seasoning salt? You know, sea salt? He's speaking symbolically, right? Because it's 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 flowing from the, the previous verses on down. As we're putting on Christ, we're walking in the wisdom of Christ, we're walking in that armor of light. And then what? It says our speech, right? So our speech is not just limited to the words that come out of our mouth as far as our conversations, right? It, it's the total package. You as a person, you you and how you conduct yourself and how you behave yourself, right? And just as we was reading in Romans 13, right? So when it comes to the places you go, right? Places that that's conducive to chambering and wantonness, right? It could be the club. It could be the strip club. It could just be your house. You're inviting some wicked woman over or you're going to her house, right? So if our speech is always with grace, seasoned with salt, right? That you may know how you ought to answer every man. So in what spirit is that being done? What is what is the 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 speech being always with grace and the season with salt. And we'll, we're going to read that in, in Matthew, um, what is the fifth chapter, right? Where it speaks of Christ was giving us that example. Because a lot of people that, that's dealing, especially with these, these so-called Israelite doctrines, right? 
where it's a doctrine that's based on, on doctrines and leaven of men, right? Traditions of men. They read that scripture, which we'll, we'll read it, where, where Christ was, speaks about how we're the salt of the earth. In their doctrine, and that's the same doctrine, you know, in, in our past, you know, years ago when we were first coming into the, the, the knowledge of the truth. And, but it was, it was loosely based on what? Leaven and doctrines of men, as opposed to the truth of Christ. They read that scripture, right? Let's read, let's hold this, so, and then we'll come back here. Let's go to uh, Matthew 5. And then we're going to see, because even in that scripture, right, as we're going to read it, it explains what the salt is, right? 5.13, Matthew 5.13. You know, not that I I, I I keep up with these doctrines, but I wouldn't be surprised if you hear these breakdowns and it's it's still the same breakdowns from by breakdowns meaning breakdowns and understanding of men, men's wisdom, right? And they try because they're promoting themselves, they they receive an honor that comes from men instead of honor that comes from the Most High through Christ. Then they they become they make the scriptures about them. As opposed to, to to make it about following after Christ, and so that's why you get these breakdowns that has nothing to do with the truth of the Most High Christ. So Matthew five thirteen says, "Ye are the salt of the earth, right? But if the salt hath lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is then it is thenceforth good for nothing, but to be cast out and to be trodden on the foot of men." Right? So, first of all, when Christ says, ye are the salt, who is Christ speaking to? First and foremost. Because when we know who Christ is speaking to, then we're going to know, okay, based on the examples that beginning with Christ, that, that these men and women followed after, then we're going to understand what being the salt of the earth is going into when it says ye are the salt of the earth right the first verse says right Matthew 5 and 1 and seeing the multitudes right so the multitudes amongst Israel that came to hear Christ preach the gospel right preach the doctrine the commandments of the most high teach repentance unto them he went up into a mountain and when he was set, his disciples came unto him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, see? So as Christ is teaching, many are there, right? Beginning with his disciples, first and foremost, that understanding is given unto them, right? And then also those that are like them, all those that believe upon Christ, all those that are going to follow Christ in truth and sincerity. Remember, that's why, remember, they asked Christ, the disciples asked Christ why he would always speak unto the people in, par in parables, right? What did, he, what did he answer? He said, because it is given unto you to know the mysteries, right, of the kingdom. So it wasn't meant for all to, to hear and hear with understanding. Some would hear it and it would just go through one ear out the other. They hear a parable and then it's just like, oh, that's just, it's just too, it went over their heads. It was too deep, right? Whereas Christ will always give his disciples the understanding, the breakdown of what it symbolically, what, what it truly meant. Because that salvation was meant for them, right? And those that are like them, that's going to believe, that's going to call upon Christ in truth and sincerity. And that's not going to make it about themselves and deal with the pride, right? And, and not truly follow the most high through Christ. And so that's who, first and foremost, the Eve is going into the believers of the Most High through Christ, beginning with his disciples, right? And so it's not talking about us being the salt of the earth, meaning we give the salt, we give the world flavor, like by we meaning that's why the so-called blacks, the so-called Hispanics, we're the best athletes. Like, you know, like when it comes to dancing, when it comes to style, when it comes to, to, to um, how we dress, how we dance, Nobody could be compared to us. Like we bring flavor to the world. Right? That's these breakdowns where you look at. That's Christ wasn't talking about that. The scripture's telling us not to conform, be ye separate, but yet what this world pushes, which is based on the, 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 the pride of this life, right? 
you know, about, you know, it's all about the outward, you know, how, about how much money you got, how much likes you got, how much friends you got, right? Isn't that what this was about, the pride of life, the lust of the eye, the eyes, the lust of the flesh? So how are we going to tie that in with the scripture here? That's what Christ was saying. Yeah, see, when it comes to Israel, the so-called blacks, the so-called Hispanics, see, all the nations follow after us. Like, we, 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 we the trendsetters. You know, we come with a style, we come with rap, we come with breakdancing, and now you got Chinese people breakdancing, and they're copycats. Yeah, because the scripture says we would be the salt of the earth. No. The salt of the earth meaning that what? Be patterning our life after the righteousness that comes from Christ. Right? Because the whole world is in what? Is in gross darkness. Right? Christ is that armor of light that we're supposed to be putting on, and as we're putting on Christ... The scriptures tell us that what? Now we become that example into the world. Right? That's what we, we, we begin the scripture with in Colossians, the fourth chapter, with walking in wisdom. As we walk in wisdom towards them that are without, amongst the world, now they've seen it. They've seen what? This is, this is Christ. Right? Although they might not believe it, but amongst those that the most high through Christ in time will call into this faith, it's meant for them. Right? Just as Christ, when he preached, salvation wasn't meant, wasn't going to be accepted by all of Israel, right? Because even Christ knew it, right? The light came into the world, but what? Men love what? Darkness rather than light. They love the foolishness of this world. Right? They love the wickedness. They love the wantonness, the, the chambering, the idolatry, the fornication, and every other aspect of the works of the flesh that's tied into this world, right? Many's going to prefer that over salvation through Christ. And so let's read on, verse 14. So the latter part of 13 says, it is therefore good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden on the foot of men. So if the Most High through Christ is, is calling those amongst Israel to be saved, right? Both men, women, and children to be saved, but we don't continue, right, in the patterns and the footsteps of Christ, being the salt of the earth, Right? Being, as we're going to read on, the light of the world. And it shows in what? In our conversations. We're going to go back in, in Colossians, the fourth chapter. It's going to show in our conduct. It's going to show in our behavior. Right? Just like in um, Ecclesiastes 19, right? It speaks about how a, a man be, may be known by what? By his gait, by his walk, by his look. Right? You're going to be able to establish in, in a very short time what a man or a woman is about. Right? Based on their appearance. Right? Based on how they, they behave themselves, how they, they carry themselves. Right? Didn't Christ say that about Nathaniel in John the first chapter? Where he said when he saw Nathaniel, he said, Behold, what? An Israelite indeed, in whom is what? There is no God. Right? So Nathaniel wasn't a brother that was about hypocrisy. That was about, you know, calling on the name of the most high through Christ, but truly he was about wickedness, right? He was about to bring him forth the worst of the flesh. So Christ acknowledged that it's like he's on the right path, right? Nathaniel, that he's on the he's on the right track because he's about serving the most high in truth and sincerity, right? And so Nathaniel had to what abide in that call. He had to continue in that call. Right? Just as we've been calling to this faith to be saved through Christ, we're supposed to abide in the footsteps of Christ. And if we deviate from that, we turn back, right? We want to entertain the foolishness of this world. We want to conform to the wickedness of this world. The latter part of the verse now, that's what's going to be fitting towards those that what depart from the faith. It says, it is meant for good for nothing, right? Because if you put in salt, you know, to spice up the, the, to give the food flavor, as much salt you keep putting in, wait a minute, this is, there's no flavor coming out of it. It's still bland. What are you going to, you're going to keep the salt around for your next dish? You're going to know. You're going to throw it away and get a different salt, right? Well, on a, on a higher spiritual level, right, most of us calling in this faith to what? To bring forth fruit, right? And that our fruit may remain, right? Beginning with the disciples. If at any point we don't want to do the job of a servant, right, of the most high through Christ, then what? Most high is going to kick us out the way and bring someone else in that's going to do the work, right? That's why Christ would always say that's those that's going to be last, that's going to be first, and those that will be called first, they're going to be last, Right? Because you didn't make the most of the calling by continuing and believing upon Christ and be that example, 
you know, unto Israel. And what? Just like the Pharisees that stayed in their sins, they didn't repent. They're going to be thrown in that what? Have a lake, last and lake of fire, right? They, that's going to be their, their, their blessing. They're not going to get to see everlasting life. They're not going to see that resurrection of life as unto the believers, right? Because they didn't do it in the right spirit. They was about themselves. They was a God unto themselves. They didn't truly believe on the most high through Christ. So verse 14 says, ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. So again, who's the, who's the ye? The believers of Christ, right? Those that's going to abide in the calling, they're going to continue Right? As Christ walked, they're going to walk. As Christ behaved, talked, right? Was a faithful servant to the Most High, that's going to be the same example we're going to follow. Right? And then, first and foremost, that world is going into who? Israel that's scattered to this world. Right? As the Most High to Christ, you know, returning unto the believers in the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, scriptures tell us, you know, through that, that those gifts, some's going to be called to be what? Bishops, deacons, pastors, evangelists, workers of miracles, helps, right? And, and you read it in Ephesians, the fourth chapter, all that is for what? For the, for the purpose of what? Let's, let's get that real quick. It's either Ephesians 4, and that's going to go right back to what we're reading in Matthew 5. Let me get it real quick. So there's, there's a purpose to, to the calling, right? Let's read verse 11. Ephesians 4, let's, let's read it from 10. And then from 10 to about 12. Ephesians 4, verse 10. It says, He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens, that he might fill all things, meaning to fulfill, right? Fulfill all the prophecies in regard to how Christ, you know, would come as his brethren, like like it tells you in uh, Deuteronomy 18, right? Where Paul, I mean, um, Moses prophesied in regards to Christ being the true prophet, the prophet of all prophets, right? When he would come, he would show us all things. He would teach us all things. And the sister in um, in in, in John, the fourth chapter, right? The sister in Samaria said the same thing. Because all the prophets began with Moses prophesied concerning Christ, right? That he would come to save Israel from their sins. And the fulfillment of that was he would die for the sins of Israel. And that's what we're reading here when it says he that descended. So he would descend into the uttermost part of the earth, in the grave. He would be killed, right? As Israel's true Lamb of God that was sent of the Most High. To save Israel from their sins. But it was not possible that Christ should remain in the grave to see corruption, right? According to the scriptures. Right? So the next part says, also is the same also that ascended up far above all heaven. So when the Most High was risen, I mean, when the Most High rose Christ from the dead after three days and three nights, right? In the heart of the earth, in the grave, right? He was resurrected. That's what. When he was risen, right, he was he was resurrected from the grave because it was impossible that he should be holding of it, right? Because he was he was without sin, he was perfect. Right? He took on the sins of Israel upon him. Right? That should have been us in the grave, but the Most High resurrected him with power and glory. And after the forty days and forty nights, which he spent with the disciples, teaching them of the things concerning the scriptures that he had to fulfill. That's what the latter part of verse is that he might fulfill all things. The disciples watched as he what ascended far above our visible heavens into the most high's heaven, right? To sit at the right hand of the most high's throne and fulfilling Psalm 110 and 1, right? Until all Christ's enemies be made his footstool. Right? And so that same Christ, that's what the scripture is speaking about, says in verse 11, says, and he gave some apostles and some prophets, and some evangelists, and some pastors, and teachers, right? So what scripture speaks concerning how when Christ would ascend, that he would receive gifts to give unto men? That's Psalm 68, right? Psalm 68, 18. Speaks in regards to the gifts, right? The gifts is going into 
the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, which would be given in what? In measure upon the saints, upon the believers, right? Beginning with his disciples, when you read in Acts, the second chapter, when they was observing the Feast of um, First Fruits, right? Not too many, um, probably possibly about a couple months, right? Because the First Fruits is, is 50 days after the, the the last day of the Feast of the Passover, Feast of Eleven Bread. So if you count the 50 days, so roughly about two months after Christ died, buried, resurrected, and then ascended, he returned to them to fulfill Psalm 18, Psalm 68, 18, in which he would receive gifts, right, through the outpouring of the Holy Spirit to give unto, beginning with his disciples. And not only limited to his disciples, but unto what? All the believers. That was the whole purpose of when Christ commanded the disciples to what? Preach repentance in his name, right? And then to baptize in Israel in, in, in water for remission of sins. What else did it, did it mention that they would receive? The outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And, and through the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, some would be chosen by the Most High through Christ to be what? As servants, as ambassadors, to be what? Apostles prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers for what? The perfecting of the saints, see? For the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. So the reason that we came into this verse here is, as we was reading how Christ was speaking beginning with his disciples, disciples, how they would be chosen to be what? The salt of the earth, right? And then also be what? The light of the world. They're not doing it on their own. The disciples not coming with their own doctrine, right? With their own with their own scriptures, with their own understanding. No, they they bring them forth the understanding of the scriptures through the outpouring of the Holy Spirit for the purpose of what? Verse twelve says, for the perfecting of the saints. See? That's why Paul in the scriptures says what? One man with water, right? I mean, one man would plant, the seed is planted, another would bring forth what? The water. But who's going to give the increase? But the Most High is going to give the increase to the outpouring of the Holy Spirit through Christ. That's what the perfecting of the saints is going into. Being washed with water, right? By the Word, by the, by the Holy Spirit of the Most High through Christ. And it says, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. See, so as, as all of us is being called to be to be believers and followers of Christ, to be servants of Christ, for what purpose? We read it. To to like last week when we was going into the, the parable of, of the penny, the laborers that was going to receive that penny. Well, that's part of the work we're doing, right? For the perfecting of the saints through the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, for the work of the ministry. Whose ministry is it? is it? Is it our church? Is it our ministry? No, it's the Most High through Christ's ministry. Most High through Christ's church. Christ is the body by which we all make up the many members of that body, right? And it says, for the edifying of the body of Christ. So if we're not doing our job, if we're not fulfilling that role, meaning the salt losing its savor, its purpose, well, Christ said what? It is thenceforth good for nothing, right? But to be trodden on the foot of men. You know, get that guy out of there. Let's bring in another, you know, apostle, true prophets, true evangelists, true pastors and teachers that's going to do the work for the right purpose. The purpose of what? This is Christ's church. This is Christ's ministry. All of us are what? Fellow laborers in that. And we're doing it in faith and grace by the mercy of the most High through Christ. So let's go back to Ephesians. I mean, uh, Colossians. Sorry, Colossians four. Well, actually, before Colossians, we we left off at uh, Matthew five. So we we coming back to Colossians after we read uh, these next verses here in Matthew five. So let's read verse fourteen again. It says, you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid, right? So when, when Christ was, was during his ministry, right? When he was preaching the commandments of the Most High, the doctrine of the Most High, 
was Christ doing it in a way where it was hid? No. He, he did it where he wasn't ashamed to bring forth the commandments of the Most High, even though he knew the the uh, repercussions that he would face because of that. He would he would ruffle feathers in Israel, beginning with the the, the high priest that, that did, did not believe upon him, the Pharisees that did not believe upon him, right? The scribes that did not believe in upon him. And they had a hold upon the people where they could really, you know, it, it, and they did, right? They, 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 they brought forth that division to where many was caught between two opinions, right? They saw the miracles. They saw the works of Christ. They read out of the scriptures concerning the prophet that would come to teach us all things, right? That... Moses, Isaiah, Jeremiah, David, and the Psalms were concerning, but because they were more about following and, and, and having affinity and, and 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 pleasing men more than pleasing the Most High. When it came to Christ, they were offended at Christ's doctrine, right? But that did not stop Christ from doing the will of the Most High, and that's the what that's what the the, the verse is going into. It says a city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Right, so we we could look at it both beginning spiritually and then physically. Where if our mind is not upon the Most High through Christ, we're gonna be ashamed of the Most High through Christ. And so when we monks, those that are without, as we read in, in Colossians four, I, I don't want to show my fringes, you know. I don't want to bring out scriptures. People are talking about, you know, Halloween coming up and then Thanksgiving and then Christmas and what do you? Well, we're going to get together. We're we'll bringing in the food and all that. But I'm at my, my family's house right now. I'm at my sister's house. I don't want to say anything, so I'm just going to keep quiet. Hey, you come into the, the Thanksgiving feast? Oh, I don't know. I may have something to do. I may have to work. Is, is that the reason you're not going to be there? <laughs> what if you didn't have to work? <laughs> well, I'm going to be out of town that week. Uh, I'm sorry, you know. But you just don't want to offend. No, wait a minute. That's 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 not one of the high holy days in the scriptures we're supposed to follow. That has nothing to do with the scriptures, right? That's dealing with idolatry. That's that's dealing with the the the, the breaking of the Most High's commandments. We're not supposed to engage in that. You don't read about these days in the scriptures. Christ wasn't promoting that. The, the disciples of Christ wasn't promoting that, right? Now some people, are, oh, there he goes again. You know, I knew it, you know, other, whereas others may say, you know what, really? I, I didn't know we, could, we shouldn't be doing that. And they're asking questions, right? And that's what the scripture speaks about what? Our speech is always supposed to be what? Grace with salt, right? And then that salt is whether they're going to hear, whether they're going to forbear. You know what? I'm doing the work of an evangelist. I'm doing the work of the most high. Because who's to say, right? Maybe you went around your family like, all the time. Like every now and then, you know, keep the peace. You come around and you might know certain relatives of yours. They're always cutting up, being a, a mocker, right? Who used to say that day, most I didn't have them go through something, whereas now that was the time the most I was going to call them into the faith by your good works, by your, by your speech, being grace with salt. That's why you needed to hear. As opposed to, ah, you know what, later for this guy. He's a knucklehead anyway. He's not going to listen. He's a fornicator and he's a mocker. Oh. Always stay in the spirit because who's to say, you know, yeah, he's been he's been talking that foolishness for like all these years, right? Although he knew you were about the Most High through Christ, and then this was the day Most High's calling into the faith. But by you not being an example in the scriptures, now his blood's gonna fall upon you. See that? Let's, so let's read verse fifteen. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick. See, so would it would it make sense? You know, there's a blackout all of a sudden, right? You got a candle or a flashlight, but then you're gonna put it under a bucket. Like you you lit it up to get light to light up the whole room, right? So it, it's like it, it's counterproductive, right? So if, if we through the spirit of Most High through Christ being the light that's going to bring forth the spirit of the Most High through Christ and give that understanding unto Israel that's in the world, that's currently, presently in darkness, 
and show them the light of Christ, but yet we're going to be offended, we're going to be ashamed, and we don't want to promote the Most High, we don't want to promote Christ. Okay, and whereas Most High is saying, you know what, to the, our point of the Holy Spirit, you are called to be an apostle, you are called to be an evangelist, you are called to be a teacher, you are called to be a help. But you're not being fruitful in that role, well, you thenceforth good for nothing. Move you out the way. Replace you with somebody else that's going to do the work. Right? And so, latter part of verses, it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Right? So, the house is what? Symbolically represents Israel in the world. So, wherever that, that opportunity most I presented to where you're able to share the gospel. You know, somebody's walking in, in a way that's not right with the Most High through Christ. It doesn't have to be a whole two-hour class or three-hour couple scriptures in there. It's the seed being planted. You know, you on the go, you on the run, and then real quick, I had a question here. Yeah, you know, you, you see the brother, sister, whatever, eating swine's flesh or something like that. They didn't know any better. Instead of being judgmental and they're already, you know, judging the person, they probably didn't know. Hey, yeah, they, they set you up a plate. Let's say you had your relatives or something. They cook food and stuff. And they have pork. They got chicken. All these other. Hey, can we set you up a plate? Yeah, somebody cooked some ham hocks. This at the other. Oh no, we're not supposed to eat that according to the scriptures. That's an abomination. Right? The scriptures also gives us, you know, even when it comes to our diet, there's laws and commandments and how the things that most I says we're supposed to eat. You know, that, that's that's good for us, that's healthy for us. And then there's other things that it's not a choice. Most of us, it's an abomination. It wasn't meant to be consumed, to be eaten, right? But instead of saying that, uh, no, nah, just, you know, that could have been a perfect opportunity because the person didn't know any better. Just like at one point, we didn't know any better. We just ate whatever we did, anything we wanted to. And then just that, you know, a couple scriptures here and there, your speech is graced with salt. Oh, really? I, I didn't know that. Like I go to church all the time. My pastor never brings out scriptures on when it comes to diet. There's a separation that's holy, and then in the most high, we're not supposed to do certain things. Well, truth be told, that's going to the scriptures, you know, and then that's all, you know, right then and then. The seed being planted, most high gives an increase later on versus calling you. Yeah, I had a question, and then most high bring in the faith. Oh, and who gets the praise and glory? The Most High through Christ. Because we didn't do it. Because at one point we didn't know that. Right? But what we're reading here is that what? That light is not being hidden. Right? People people see and understand based on your behavior, how you carry yourself, and then right down to what? Your conversations. Even in the correction, it's going to be done in a way where, where it's going to be coupled with what? With grace, with mercy. Even sometimes people just. They want to be like a, a, a heretic, right? They want to have their opinions and they want to make light of the matter, right? The scripture speaks about how when it comes to um, a, a fool, it sports for them, right? When it comes to doing wickedness, right? So they want to be, they want to make you the, the blunt of the joke. Well, let's see at the end of the day, you know, Most High is not a man that he should lie. You know, we break his commandments and then we're not trying to repent. We're going to have to answer for that. Right? But most times given every man a choice. But by, based on how we live our life, there's going to be a deciding factor when Christ comes back to judge the world, whether we're going to receive everlasting life or we're going to be destroyed. All we could do is the example of the scripture. We can't force anybody to apply them, but we certainly, as we read in here, have to be that light, be that example. Right? So verse 16 says, Let your light so shine before men. See? That's what we was reading in regards to Colossians, the fourth chapter, right? Walking in wisdom towards them that are without, redeeming the time. Christ knew the time that he was at hand during his ministry was what? To save Israel from their sins. So Christ wasn't wasting time. Israel needed to be saved from their sins. So he wasn't ashamed, even though he knew he was going to suffer persecution. He was going to be persecuted for it, right? He was going to be hated of all men. But he knew that what? Even when it came to the death of the cross, Most High was going to let his body to rot right, in that grave. Like regular sinful men. As long as Christ believed in the Most High, he was faithful unto the Most High, he knew that Most High was going to resurrect him and then eventually allow him to ascend 
and sit at the right hand, at his right hand in power and glory. Right? And so that's our example. Right? So verse 16 says, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good work. See? So if our light is not shining, our light being who? The armor of light, Christ, putting on Christ. If they're not able to see the good work, right? How would they do the last part? Was it and glorify your Father which is in heaven? See, how do you glorify the, the Father which is in heaven? It, it could be a case for like, man, I never knew that. All the years I was eating swine flesh, all the years I was celebrating Christmas, and then knowing that what we not save of ourselves, that's when we humble ourselves. Yeah, at one point I didn't know that. I used to do the very same things that our people are still doing right now in the world, right? To show that what. We're not above correction. <laughs> or we're not being saved of ourselves. This truth came out of the mercy and grace of the Most High through Christ. Right? And so, and, and speaking in that humility, that's like reassuring to Israel. Wait, wait a minute. See, this guy here is not puffed up. This sister here is not, you know, on some pedestal where it is righteous and, and, and holier than everybody else in the world. Right? Even Christ <laughs> being without sin. Being perfect. He didn't have that spirit where he was like condescending towards Israel, right? He's sitting with the publicans and the sinners and then he just magnifying himself over them to the point where it's like, man, like Christ, whenever he's in the room, he just makes us feel like the worst thing in the world. Because, you know, we are the worst sinner, we the worst this, we're the worst fornicator. No, Christ wasn't coming to Israel like that. He came, that's what scripture says, what? He came to save man's life, not to destroy it. See, whereas the opposite of it was the Pharisees. <laughs> They're sinners themselves, and when, when you're in that presence, you gotta be on eggshells. And, and the eggshells you're on is based on what? Their doctrine. Their commandments. Not even the commandments of the Most High. In Most High, Christ said what? His, when it comes to falling after him, he said his burden is light, right? But when he came to the burden that the, the Pharisees was putting upon men, the scripture said Christ said in Matthew 23 it was what heavy it, they made them heavy for men to bear because now it's kind of like you going outside of the commandments of the most high and then you setting up traditions that the most high didn't even command us to follow after and then that's how you're ruling that's how men is, is going to be appear righteous or not based on these traditions so when it comes to you doing good for your father and mother you got to think about, I got to give it to, you know, the Pharisee at the temple first. And then your father and mother in a situation where they're in need. Ah, later for you, mom. Later for you, dad. Because we got to take care of, of, you know, the temple, the synagogue. Now, with all of them, think about it. With all the members in that synagogue that's given, whether one person's given a penny or one person's given 10 or 20, 30. What's, what's more needful? Where your, your father and mother is in, in dire need, and then you're gonna base your decision of not helping them because of some, some leaven of the Pharisees. If there's a hole in the roof, will, there, will that, is that, is that supposed to get fixed or water's not coming in here? Yeah, it's gonna get fixed if everybody else is able to, to help out. But now, nah, brother, like, we need your dollar, too. Like, that last dollar you had, don't give it to your family. Make sure you think about the church first. And then I'm not even caring about your situation, what you're going through, what your household's going through. And truth be told, where's the money really going? Is it going about, you know, the business of the church? No, it's going in their pockets. Right? So they're about their belly. And so they made the truth hard for Israel to bear it. Because every decision that they made, Remember the commandment of the Pharisee. <clears throat> now remember the commandments of the Most High. Remember the 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 the, the judgment of the Pharisee. If, if they catch you not following after, they're going to put you out of the synagogue. That's foolishness, right? And so they got these people more in the fear of them than the Most High through Christ. And so let's read verse sixteen again. So it says, "Let your light so shine before men." So through the Spirit of the Most High through Christ, that's our example, right? That they may see your good works and glorify your your Father, which is in heaven. See, so when Christ was doing the good works, was he doing it 
So men could praise and glorify him? No. In many cases, Christ, when he did the miracles, he told them, go to the temple. Right? Go to the temple and, and, and pray and, and do, bring forth the gifts in the temple. So Christ takes himself out of that because now was Christ worthy of praise and glory? Yes. But what? Christ always deflected the praise and glory of the Most High. That's why he told a man in Matthew 19, right? When a man called him good, he said, why call him thou me good? There is none good but one. That is who? The Most High. See? So if we always have that mentality, no matter how good we may appear unto men, you know, you do something that that very appreciative by somebody, man, thank you, brother. I really needed that $10. It really came, you know, it, it helped me big time. I was at a time where I was going to be down and out. I was going to be kicked out of my apartment. But you're making it about you. Like, like you earn that money. That person better recognize that it came from you. If it wasn't for you, they'd be out on the street. Oh, well, I'll praise the most high through Christ. I had the money to lend to you or to give to you. You know, that's what you know, I says. The brother's born for adversity. You know, one day I might need you to help me out. You know, but all the praise and glory goes back to the most high through Christ. See, when we have that mentality, most high is going to say, that's a very good answer. I'm going to keep blessing you because you have an understanding that where that that capability came from. Right? Whether it's you spiritually sharing the scriptures or you you help in, in, in possessions, things that you'll be able to give and help someone out. All the praise and glory goes back to who? The most high to Christ, right? And as you've been that example amongst Israel and the world, ultimately, who are they going to glorify? Man. Especially if they already knew us in the world. They're like, man, I, 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 you was never like that, you know? Some of us may have been in the world very selfish, right? About self. And to where now you very, you know, you very charitable brother, sister. But how did you get to be, to, to, to become that type of a person? To the most high through Christ. And then you acknowledge that. You, you, you exemplify that both in action and speech. And they're like, wow. I, I definitely see the change in you, brother. I see the change in you, sister. And you know what? We couldn't have done it of ourselves. And then who's getting the praise and glory? The most high through Christ. So let's go back to Colossians 4. Just a couple more scriptures and then um, we'll uh, read uh, a verse or two in regards to the New Moon Sabbath since over here in Jacksonville, we're in the midst of the New Moon Sabbath now. So we've passed the weekly Sabbath that's ended and then now we're in the second Sabbath right now. From sundown to sundown, we're in the New Moon. So we'll read a couple of scriptures so we all understand the, the Sabbath that we're observing from this uh New Moon Sabbath. So verse 6, Colossians 4 and 6. It says, Let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that ye may know how ye ought to answer every man. See? So we've established that the the the, the season with salt, right? The speech being grace with always be grace. What is that going into? In the spirit of the Most High through Christ, right? so as, as Most High through Christ is is given to every man a, a, a portion, right, of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Now, in, in every situation that we're dealing with, whether we're dealing in a situation that is 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 um, is very receptive to the Scriptures, right, like in the case of tonight, we're all here, we're all in the Spirit, we're not coming with doctrines. We're not coming with opinions, right? We we come in in the in the, in the observance of the Sabbath day, right? We we come in in the spirit of, of the bond of peace, right? To glorify and praise the Most High and, and to to be grateful for this blessed day, right? With that understanding that what through Christ we saved, so that's a, that's a very good wholesome environment to be in, right? But what if we're in a case where now now we having heresies come in, right? Divisions, right? As we read it in um, in Romans thirteen, like let's say we 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 dealing with like um, people coming with the spirit of, of variance in here, or, or the, the spirit of of envious, the spirit of, of speaking evil. Well, if we dealing in the spirit of Most High through Christ, the Scriptures tell us that what if 
Our speech is always with grace, seasoned with salt, that ye may know how ye ought to answer every man. See, in whatever situation we're dealing with, okay, I'm going to go to my relatives, I'm going to my father's, my mother's house today, my cousins. Okay, I have to know that what? It doesn't change. Right? If I'm going to one of brothers and sisters' houses here, right? My guard is going to be in a way where I'm still sober and vigilant, but it's not going to be where, okay, I don't know what Theo's. You go to Theo and he's talking some foolish, some worldliness. Like, I, it's vexing when I go to the brother's house. No. Whereas if I'm going to my cousin's house in the world, I'm like, you know what? They're inviting us, me and my wife over for dinner. They haven't seen us in a while or they're in town or something. They want to get together, right? I, I have to keep in mind that there's going to be an aspect of the world that may come out of that conversation. Oh, yeah, did you know yesterday was my birthday? Yeah, so they expect, oh, yeah, it was. Happy birthday, man. Huh? How old are you now? See, that's that's the conversation they probably got. They was receiving that whole week, right? Whereas now they get around a brother, sister. Uh, now we don't know how to answer. Uh, I don't want to make, you know, now I don't want to make it where the, the situation is awkward. Like, we know we're not talking. People feeling uncomfortable. He didn't know. Well, there's an opportunity to show him, but you're doing it with what? The scripture says your speech be always with grace. Now we, we don't get in a comfortable, like we're pausing. How should you answer that? Somebody says, yesterday was my birthday. And, or it's, it's, it's so-called Mother's Day or something. Or you with your wife and your children, and then you meet a relative, and then they're telling your wife, oh, happy Mother's Day. You know, today's Mother's Day, you know, because they know she's a mother. That's my cousin. That's my auntie. I don't know. No, the scriptures is you're gonna answer, but you're gonna do it in a way where it's gonna be what grace and season with salt. You know, Christ didn't come to destroy a man's life; he, he came to save it. Right? You read in, in Mark, right? I want to say Mark, the second chapter, when Christ was sitting with the publicans and the sinners, right? And technically, when you think about it, every man is a publican and sinner in the eyes of the Most High, right? But the reason it said it in that way, who was making that division? Was it Christ calling certain ones publicans and sinners? No, it was the Pharisees, right? Because in that same situation, they were saying, hey, they, they're already judging Christ as he's an evildoer. He's sitting with publicans. Well, when he sat with you, he was sitting with a sinner. But the difference was, the scripture says that many of them, as far as the ones it was calling, the, the Pharisees and them was calling publicans and sinners, the scripture says many followed him. See, that's the key. When Christ is sitting with them, they're following Christ. So which means, who's doing the influencing? Is, it, is they influencing Christ or Christ influencing them? Think about it. The scripture says many, when Christ was sitting at meat with them, they follow Christ. Although yesterday this guy was fornicating, this guy here was, was uh, dealing unjust as far as a publican, taking more than he should have. When it comes to the taxes, whatever, right? they're not publicans sitting with Christ. Hey, I know how you can get over on Caesar. See, I got a scam. And that's like, wait a minute. Render unto Caesar what is Caesar's. And render unto the most high what's the most high's. Right? When it comes to robbing your brother, no, you're not supposed to unjust, deal unjustly with your brother like that. Right? So as they fall in Christ, Christ is the one that's doing the teaching. They're not teaching Christ anything. They're sitting there, they're learning from Christ, right? And so we sitting with, whether we're on our break at the job, you're working with a co-worker, you're visiting with family, relatives in the world, right? We sitting amongst them and things is coming up in the conversation, right? If we, we end the scriptures, we're learning of Christ, we're going to know how to deal with any situation, you know, a fornicating situation or it might be a case where someone's talking, man, me, my cousin, you know, cousin so-and-so, I can't stand her, right? Boom, boom, boom. Are we supposed to be feeding into that? No, because now we're dealing in hatred, right? So we applying the scriptures. You might quote the scripture or even the answer is based on the scriptures. Well, man, did you talk to her? Like, you know, does she even know that she did the wrong? Oh, yeah, she knew. Well, we've done wrong too in the sight of the Most High every day. But yet when we pray, we pray the Most High to forgive us, right? Maybe it was your approach, like how when you corrected her or him, how did you come off? Was you being judgmental? Was you already 
have making assumptions that they did it. Did you ask questions or see when you answer like that? They like see they was thinking that they was gonna get you to side with them, right? But then your speech being graced with salt. Now instead of you having had a conversation with your cousin and then they leaving and then they still proud in their sins and they still hyped up because you add a fuel to the fire instead of quenching it through the scriptures. See? In reading what we read in Matthew 5, right? How would they glorify the Father? See, now you give them the answer according to the scriptures. Now, whether they're going to go in that anger or whatever spirit, a fornicating spirit, idolatrous spirit, you told them, you know, like let's say you were at a restaurant and then they eat, they order a lobster, different things. And then you make a point, you know, oh, I know you probably don't know, you know, but according to the scriptures, also I gave us, you know, certain commandments, you know, in regards to our diet, right? And those are the things when we keep the most high's commandments, it's a blessing unto us. But when we don't, you know, that's why we get sick, we get all kinds of diseases or whatever. Even if we've been doing it for years and years, it doesn't make it right. You know, ultimately, most high is going to judge us. Right? Oh, what? What scripture is that? Well, Leviticus 11. You know, and it talks about the types of meats that we could eat. You know, the, the types of when it comes to birds, as far as poultry, when it comes to the cattle, when it comes to the fish in the seas. Right? And then you you doing it in a way where you're not trying to you know ram the scriptures down their throat or, or making them feel like you know the worst thing on earth, but you doing it in a way where it's done with with understanding, it's done with patience, it's done with um, um, long suffering. And then you gauge by the answer. If they tell, well, my body, my body, I'm gonna eat what? Okay. That's all I needed to hear. But then if you, the person say, you know what, I didn't know that. You know, I, I'm I'm gonna look in, I'm gonna look into that when I get home. Well, what chapter was that again? Uh, Leviticus 11. Oh, forget, text me, give me a call. I can go over with you. See that? Now whether they're gonna hear or forbear, that's on them. But see, we, we did the job of a servant and most high through Christ. See, in that situation, we don't change. See, that's that's the whole thing that, you know, like, when you read about Christ, you always knew the type of person you was going to get out of Christ, right? Christ wasn't the type. Let's get that one. Let's end with this one in um, Ecclesiastes. Now that I mentioned it, um, Ecclesiastes 20, 27. And we'll end there and we'll, we'll, we'll get into a couple of scriptures dealing with the new moon. And then Lord Waller will probably continue on this lesson the next next uh, Sabbath. But let's uh, read a couple of verses here. Please ask us 27. I think I quoted it earlier, but. Yeah. Please ask us 27, um, verse 11, and we'll read it down to 13. Please ask us in the Apocrypha. Chapter 27, verse 11. It says, The discourse of a godly man is always with wisdom. See? Isn't that what we were just reading? About our, our speech, right? Being with grace, seasoned with salt. So, is it sometimes when it comes to godly men, you're going to hear wisdom out of them? The discourse is going into your speech, your conversation. Right? But it's not just limited to that. Your whole being everything about you like you're not seeing a brother like is that brother so-and-so died like pants sagging just being a fool yeah that's a brother so-and-so would that be the, the the behavior of a godly man no All right like oh, nobody's around now you're just cutting up but who's around the most high sees it All right so always be mindful that what even though sometimes people might not, they may have seen you. Yeah, I, I saw you the other day. But they're observing. They're they seeing you, how you carry yourself, how you how you behaving. From a distance, people are seeing, okay, is, is that person being an in, in example of being the light of the world through Christ? Or are they being a, a foolish man or a foolish woman right now? Right? At the job, you know, cutting up. And then, you know, this woman's a loose woman or something, a horrid woman. 
nobody's around. You're playing games with it. Was 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 Joseph doing that in, in Potiphar's house? No servants around. Nah, just just sitting by her, just you know, rubbing shoulders, whatever. Like that's not your wife, brother. Like, and Potiphar comes in. You wasn't doing that, right? So, scripture, the discourse of a godly man is always with wisdom to the point where, okay, you know what? He, you discern the situation. I can't be here right now. It's like you do a, a 180. You walk in the room, ah, nah, this is madness going in here, right? You amongst your family, relatives, and then, you know, it, it started out as a get to, and then people breaking out cigarettes and weed and excessive drinking going on and people arguing and stuff. You know, you try to, you know, as best as you can to to, to quench it. Everybody's it's like, okay, this is not your battle. This is, this is something that most I've told you it's time to leave, right? That's when, but when it comes to being in the spirit, you're going to know how to judge every situation. You're going to know how to discern it, right? But the latter part of the verse is, but a fool, see, changes as the moon, right? You said we're going to read the scriptures as pertaining to the moon, right? The moon goes to the different phases, right? And then when it's at the darkest period, point, that's the new moon, right? But then you get, you know, full moon, first quarter, second quarter, third quarter, all the different of the moon, right? So you see how most I'm comparing a, a, a person that's foolish, a person that's not dealing with the wisdom of the scriptures. You never know what you're going to get. One person, one, one minute, they're quiet. You know, they, they, they're easy to be around. And the other time, it's just like, man, like now you're getting into a fight with the person. Or are you fighting because you're defending them? Because this person last week was fornicating with some man's woman, and then now he, that guy's out for revenge because he's a fool, right? That's why scriptures tell us that what? He continually with a godly man will not know us to keep the most high commandments. See, as, as, as much as we can, we try to be around those of the faith, right? Because those are the ones that we know what they're going to be mindful speaking the same thing, being one mind, one accord, right? But it's an inevitable. We're still going to be dealing with the people in the world, right? Christ didn't just make his ministry just, I'm just going to keep it close knit. No, Christ still was in the marketplace, was in the temples, synagogues, different places, right? Different towns, different cities. And amongst them, there were those that was going to believe and follow after him. And, and amongst them, there was going to be those that was going to be what? Heretics, right? Non-believers. But in every situation, there was not going to detect as far as how Christ was going to behave. Christ knew my mind is going to be about doing the will of the Father, right? Whether they're going to hear, whether they're going to forbear. I'm still the same person, right? So verse 12, if thou be amongst the indiscreet, right? So what is the indiscreet? The word discreet is in there. Right? One that lacks discretion, right? So going back to the, the, the previous verse, a fool. Right? And again, when we speak about a fool, in many cases, it's an ignorance. Because just like we were foolish at one point, right? So we're not saying in a way to be judgmental towards Israel. Hey, I get around my cousin, I get around my niece, and every, everything is this world, that world, fornicating, this money, that... How was we talking when we was in the world? The same way, right? So we're not um, amongst them in a way where we we kind of having that spirit where we, we puffed up, we on a pedestal, and, and then we high minded, you know, we we always judging them. But at the same time, know who you're amongst, right? Observe the time. Let's let's read it. it says, if thou be amongst in the street, observe the time. So what does it mean by observe the time? If, like tonight, we're amongst brothers and sisters in the faith, right? In observance of the new moon's habit, right? There's, there's a different spirit in here. There's a different vibe in here, right? But let's say come Monday, Tuesday, we're at work, right? Whether you, you're on the office, whether you're at work, whether you're at home, right? You're, on the, you're getting on the call, right? And there's going to be all types of people on this conference call. Be ready for the foolishness. Right? How was your weekend? Oh yeah, I went to this club last night. Blah, 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 blah. I did this, I did that. Observe the time. There's a time to keep the peace and there's a time to say something, right? In many cases, the spirit will show you. You know, that's not my conversation. 
This is a conversation between Bob and Ted and whoever else going on with this worldly stuff. Oh yeah, so who, who's what are your kids going to be dressing up as? You know, for for Halloween. That's not my. I'm amongst the industry. Observe the time. Yeah, my daughter, she's a cheerleader. Boom, boom, boom. That's not my conversation. We was in the, this championship tournament last Saturday. Like, we're not into that. So, but don't be in a way where I got to be a team player. Oh, yeah. Isn't that, did y'all win? And now you're all in the conversation. You, you know you shouldn't be talking that. You're talking about breaking the most high's commandments in some worldliness. But because you want to be one of the team, you know, one of the ones that, you know, I don't want the, the, when it comes to a bonus or a raise or, you know what I'm saying, a promotion, that's my manager. So I have to be nice to my manager. And then, but she's taught, no, 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 we don't, what do you do Saturday? Oh, well, it's a Sabbath, you know, so I have a way you want to put it, but it's not going to be anything that is going to be conforming or I'm going along to get along type of thing, right? The Spirit will show you how to, uh, to answer. That's what we was reading, right? Are we done with the Spirit of the Most High through Christ? We walk in the wisdom towards them that are without? The Spirit of the Most High will show us. Just like the Most High showed Christ how to answer every man. You think when Christ was walking in Rome, there wasn't some celebration to, to Venus going on, to, Di you know, Di all of uh, madness going to Zeus and this, you know, the sun god this, that, the other. Like, we're going to be in a Colosseum next week. There's going to be, oh, yeah, Christ is sitting with the publicans and sinners. What time? Ah, he's correcting them. Now, whether they're going to go and do it, that's on them. But they've been admonished. They've been corrected by Christ. Right? And that's the same spirit we have. So the latter part of the verse is, but be continually among men of understanding. See, so just like Lot, right, when he was in, in Sodom and Gomorrah, Scripture says what? He was vexed with the filthy communication of the wicked, right? So he wasn't, man, I'm in, I'm in Sodom and Gomorrah. Be as the men of Sodom and Gomorrah fornicators, idolaters, lewd, you know, they, they're doing their, their devil worship, feastings and, and celebration. Well, most high knows my heart. Oh, he was vexed. But as much as he could, scripture says what? But be continually among men of understanding. See? So we know being in this world, we're going to have to work, we're going to have to go shopping, we're going to be amongst people and engaging in things in the world and and many times we're going to see foolishness going on we're going to hear foolishness going down right we're in the world but we're not of the world we're not conforming right you walk into the store walmart or whatever you see all the decorations for whatever ho devil holidays that's coming up and then people you know trying to greet you the cashier oh happy holidays and they're talking about you know some thanksgiving some christmas I'm not answering back to because that's the thing to say or do, you know. Oh, I don't, I don't celebrate that, you know, because you you shopping. You know, this is not the proper venue to be teaching, right? Depending on the situation, but I'm not gonna go in agreement because people behind me, people around me, I'm ashamed, and I just wanna. I don't want to appear like you know, like uh, like I'm a Christian, but. The Christians, true Christians, were about the most high through Christ. They wasn't condoning and, and, and conforming to foolishness, right? So how are we going to be ashamed and scared to, to speak the scriptures? To give answer, that's promoting righteousness. See, it goes to show that what? We're ashamed of Christ. Oh, well, we, we still want to have a friendship with this world, right? And what did James 4 says in regards to when we have friendship with this world? It, it, it's enmity with the most high. So we're not going to have it both ways. Right? Something's going to get. So verse 13. The discourse of fools is irksome. And their sport is the wantonness of sin. See? So what does it mean by the discourse of fools is irksome? So discourse is going into conversation where people are, uh, uh, are, are speaking on in a way where they, they're promoting it. They're taking delight in it, right? So what would it do to your spirit? It will vex your spirit, right? It's like, this is bothersome. Like, like there's times you, you, were in, you were in public place, whatever, right? 
And then you just like, man, like you, like you're not in the conversation, but you're hearing them in the background. You're hearing them behind you over here. You in the store. You in the office, right? Or, or you amongst relatives, and then you just like sitting back and you just hearing it. It's just like, man, this is like, like everything that they're saying is just going from one foolishness to the other foolishness. It's just like, what does that do to your spirit? And especially, we repenting from these things, right? You don't want to hear about the the the, the club and then the fornication and then the revel the reveling and and all this. Oh yeah, like what time? So what do you do? What you go and what do you do afterwards? That's the most vex our spirit, right? And so, especially when they know better, right? Because then there's there's people that that you corrected them one time, two times, three times. So now they they, they just want to be in a way where they make mockery of the truth, right? And then they know the audience, they know you in the room, but they probably gonna say, "But who, but who's gonna deal with that situation?" The Most High, right? Because who are you truly offending? Us or the Most High? The commandments came from the Most High. This is not our commandments. So you want to make light of it, make a joke of it? Well, who are you going to have to answer when judgment comes? The Most High, right? And so the latter part of the verse says, and their sport, right, is the wantonness of sin. See? So the things that they take delight in, you know, they can't wait to get into. You know, when, when someone's into sport, and that's a sport that all their life, they've, they've trained themselves to do it, right? Basketball player, football player. Well, when it comes to sinners, right? Especially sinners where they know better. See, there's a difference when you don't know better, you're in ignorance, and then the most high through Christ revealed the knowledge of the truth unto you, right? And then now you know better. What does the scripture says? To him that knows to do good and doeth it not. What is it? Sin. It's willful sin now because it would be one thing that, you know, you're promoting sin, you're speaking on, you know, idolatry, fornication, right? Wickedness, hatred, murder. But now you know better. Most high through the Holy Spirit, you know, put a brother or sister in a, in a situation where they was able to, to correct you out of that through the scripture in the spirit of, of meekness, right? In the, the spirit of, of mercy. And then you want to continue in that? Well, at the end of the day, when that judgment comes, you can't say to the Most High through Christ, oh, I didn't know, right? Because you knew better, and then you still went and did it. But more so, this is exhortation for who? For brothers and sisters in the faith. Because remember how Paul said concerning those that's in the world? Let's read that one. In um, is it Corinthians 5th uh, fifth chapter, I want to say. Right, Corinthians 5 and 12. We'll read 12. No, let's read 11. 1 Corinthians 5, 11 to 13. It says, But now I have written unto you not to keep company. Oh, you know what? Let's read from verse 9. It says, I wrote unto you in an epistle not to company with fornicators. Right? So we read about, well, we didn't read it, but I make mention of it in, in, in Mark 2. I want to say it's also in Matthew, the ninth chapter, where Christ was sitting with the public and the sinners, and they, many of them followed after Christ, because Christ was being that example of the Most High's commandments unto them, right? Teaching them repentance. So Christ was in that company, but this company here is, is referring to what? Well, we're being persuaded in our lifestyles of fornicators, right? Whether it's people at your job or people that you come, you know, that you interact with, right? Whether it's friends, whether it's family, and they're dealing in the spirit of the fornication, and you, you corrected them, and they're not trying to hear it. Well, now don't be persuaded, right? Now they're teaching you to follow after that. Well, that spirit of fornication is getting on you. Paul said in that epistle, meaning in that letter, he was, he was getting on the church for that. Because what? Now all that good works was out, that do out the door when it comes to serving the most high Christ, right? And, and walking in the spirit of, of keeping the commandments through mercy that Christ gave unto us. And then they pretty much what, going a step backwards, right? Are we supposed to continue in fornication? Oh, that's against the commandments of the most high. But what are we reading here? 
he says not only that, not only the fornication, but he says, yet not altogether with the fornicators of this world, right? Or with the covetous or extortionists or with the idolaters, for then must he needs go out of the world. See? What was Paul saying here? And it goes back to the first verse we read it in Colossians 4, when it says, walking wisdom towards them that are without. Can we, can we avoid people that's fornicators, that's covetous, extortioners, idolaters, like all together, like we never want to come in contact with them or hear of it or see of it? No, just like Lot, right? And Sodom, he couldn't avoid that. That's the city he dwelt with, and that's the city that was the biggest thing going on. That, that was what was being pushed out in that city. Right? But that was that was a trial for, for Lot and his household. Right? Most I had him there, right? But he knew better. He knew the commandments, right? So now apply the commandments. Don't make it where, oh, I'm in Sodom and Gomorrah. See, brother, you would have done it too. Like, you, you don't understand the situation I was in. No. Christ was in Rome. Was Rome any different than, than Sodom and Gomorrah? You see the, the remnants of Rome, right? In, in architecture and in, in museum of fine arts and all this other stuff. They're trying to continue and, and, and keep that spirit, that wicked spirit alive. You know, bathhouses, people, that even when it comes to their sports and stuff, right? When it, when it comes to the gymnasium and everything, exercising naked and everything, what was it about? Fornication. So there was no real way to totally avoid it and not come in, in contact with it in some form or, or another. But now where's our spur? Where's our mind supposed to be at? Right? Paul is saying, but in verse 11, 1 Corinthians 5, 11, but now I have written unto you not to company. See, if any man that is called a brother to be a fornicator. See, it's one thing if the person at your job is doing that. Right? Because we have the job, they, they, they're pushing all kinds of policies now. You got all kinds of uh, 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 groups and things, LGBT, meeting at two o'clock and then optional. Oh, it's not, I'm not going there. <laughs> Is my job, if, if your job was dependent on it, then you have to make a decision. No, I'm not pushing that. You, you could fire me, then I'm gonna sue. Right? But we're talking about a case where now Paul is saying, we're not talking about people in the world doing it. Right? Because they're in the world. You just stay away from me. Keep that fornication over there. Keep that covetous spirit over there. All right? I'm over here. But now when it comes to verse 11, it says, but now I have written unto you not to keep company if any man that is called a brother. See, it says, we're supposed to be called what? A brother and sister in Christ. Members of Christ's church. Right? At least that's the hope, right? That's what, you know, we all in here with that same mind. Right? To, to, to repent and follow after Christ. Now, what if we have a brother or sister, right? That's dealing in the spirit of fornication, right? And they're not trying to repent. They're not trying to put it off. Just like in the previous verses, the man sleeping with having, you know, unlawful sexual acts with his father's wife, right? Fornication. And he's remaining in the church and people know of him in the church doing that and in the church not taking no, no action. No judgment, no scriptures is, is being brought forth to, to speak against the foolishness, right? What if it's, it's, it's brought out a man is dealing in that spirit or covetous or an idolater or a railer, see, or a drunkard, right? Like, brother, you have a spirit where you can't control a drinking, right? You cannot, you can't stop at one drink or two drinks. You get to the point where you're drinking in excess. Right, and it's making you get out the spirit and you're breaking the most high commandments. Right? We have to what? Deal with it. You can't just, ah, oh, it's brother so and so. I don't want to offend the brother. Well, scripture says it, if it's a drunkard or extortioner, right? With such an one, no not to eat. See that? So what does it mean, no not to eat? Not to keep company with them. So if you're not keeping a company with a brother or sister that's been, been corrected, and they, they have in that stance, no, nah, I'm not changing. I'm not changing from being an extortionist, right? 
I'm not changing from being a covetous person, an idolater, a thief, a railer. Person can't rule that spirit. They're always arguing, right? Always being in, in confrontational. They right, they can't be taught anything, right? They're headstrong, they're rebellious, they're fornicator. Scripture says, with such a one know not to eat. So when you're eating with somebody, they're in your company. They're in your presence. Whether we're eating, we're coming together in the fellowships, right? And in the feast days, or whether at your home, their house. Nah, brother. So you'll repent and get that, that straightened out, dealing with that spirit of fornication, idolatry, whatever sin that needs to be repented is addressed. We have to be separate, right? I'm going to love you as a brother, as a sister, right? But we cannot keep, you know, as far as promote the behavior and then like sweep it under the rug like it ain't nothing. Because what did the scriptures tell us in regards to the little leaven in, in, the, in the previous verses? Leaven the whole lump. The, the leaven is going into what? Just a small smidgen of sin, right? A small spirit of fornication is, is in here. And a person is, is, is wait a minute, Dealing in the scriptures, it's not supposed to be named not once amongst us as becoming the saints of the most high through Christ. Right? We, we're supposed to be all members of Christ's church, Christ's body. So if we have one member of the body dealing in fornication, a railer, idolater, covetous, what's that going to do to the rest of the body? Right? A little leaven, leaven to hold up, and it's going to defile the whole church at some point. Right? And, it's, it's, and remember, we read in Ephesians, the fourth chapter, it's supposed to what? The church is supposed to be perfected unto Christ. Not when something, the, the opposite of perfection is, is what is spoiled. Because now we have a church of fornicators, idolaters in here, railers is, is in, in here, right? Promoting self is in here, right? And so verse 12 says, for what have I to do to judge them also that are without do not ye judge them that are within. See, so is the focus, let's go after the fornicators out there, right? Because that's you have a lot of Israelite groups, their their whole mission, which they're not led of the most high to Christ, we're gonna wake up Israel. We're gonna teach Israel the truth. Right? And they're not addressing issues amongst themselves, right? The idolatry where you following after men. The program you pushing, that's leaven of men. That's tradition of men. Let's let's address this first. Before we talk about we're going to go in the highways and byways and the cities and in the marketplaces to, to teach Israel the truth of the Most High through Christ, which is, that's not the truth of Christ in that spirit, right? Paul says, do ye not judge them that are within? So are, are we, we, we starting with home base as far as cleaning your house first, cleaning the church first, and fully knowing that the spirit of covetousness is in here. The, the spirit of idolatry is in here. The spirit of fornication is, is in here, right? And whether it's one brother, one brother and a sister, two, three families, it, it needs to be addressed, right? And it, it's an addressing in a way where it's, it's coupled with love, with mercy, with compassion, right? Because it's about the spirit of repentance. But then you have people, and it's happened in the course of, of you know, I extending this roof where Brothers come in with appears to be a question, right? But then you like you really examine the situation, right? Diligent inquisition is being made. Like, brother, you were entertaining a devil doctrine. No, nah, no. Nah. And then it comes nations could be saved, right? They're teaching, you know, a, a doctrine or flat earth doctrine, right? A, a, a doctrine with, with other nations becoming Israel. Or a doctrine that's dealing with, with promoting fornication. Now, wait a minute. It's addressed in the scriptures time after time, weeks after weeks, lesson after lesson, to the point where the person is now, it, it, they become, they're at the point where they're hardened in their sin. They're not trying to repent. They're not trying to humble themselves. They're making excuses. They're blaming others, right? They're speaking against the teachers and others in the church that's trying to follow after Christ. So now, at the end of the day, how do we address it? Uh, let him be? No. Scripture says, with such an one, no, not to eat. Hey, brother, come over to my house. You know, we having a, and it's the same brother or sister you haven't seen, like, 
Sabbath after Sabbath after Sabbath, and we're not talking about for legit reasons. We're talking about this person here is forsaking assembly because they're entertaining worldliness. But yet, you know, on the Sabbath, there was no call, no show, right? And then comes Sunday, I was full of health, and hey, let's go to the party, let's go to the... What? What are you talking about, brother? Nah, we haven't seen you for like two months. And when we do reach out, you're not answering, or it's some type of excuse where really it's not legitimate. But most of the scriptures tell it, worse the flesh is manifest. Right? And eventually, in many cases, who does the moving out? As far as our moving out, meaning uh, moving that person out of the way. The most high, right? Remember Paul in the scripture was mentioning that, like, like we're to pray that most high may remove unreasonable men from the church in that, in that situation. Because they, when you were unreasonable, you can't be reasoned out of the scriptures. Because you become so focused and hard-headed and, and, and self-will to where the scriptures is no longer the scriptures of the most high through Christ. Now you you misreading things. Ah, there's no love. It, it's, it's brothers and sisters' interpretation of the scriptures, and they twist the scriptures. And really, truth be told, they're the ones that twist the scriptures. They're the ones that's working. I mean, that's, that's walking in a, in a worldly way. But through the Holy Spirit, Paul is saying, don't keep company with a brother that's supposed to be a brother about the Most High through Christ, or a sister about the Most High through Christ. But they're not walking and patterning themselves in a fashion of most sacrifice. With such a one, you know not to eat, right? In verse 13 now. But them that are without God judges, see? So when we're dealing with people in the world, whether it's relatives, your father in the world, your mother in the world, right? We, we, we showing that love towards them, but the love is going to be based on what? Not the love they expect you in a worldly way. No, it's, that love is going to be based on the Most High's commandments through Christ. Right, and then when they try to play game, uh, you don't love father. You, what, what kind of child are you? You know, you dishonor. No, that's not. We're not supposed to bend the scriptures for anybody. Right? And Christ already warned us that what He's come to bring that that sword between a man and his household. Right. So they they're the ones that's forcing their hands to the Most High, and then now they they're directing it towards you. Right, being their relative or being their friend and then they're trying to get you to, to bend the scriptures for them right to 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 water down the scriptures for them but really what are they trying to do they're trying to what persuade you to follow after wickedness right that's the times where we have to be like nah we're not even doing that i love you you're my friend you're my family you're my relative but i can't love you to where now is based on you, on me following and, and breaking the Most High's commandments, right? To try to please you. No, Scripture says what we are to rather to what please the Most High rather than men. That's what that's what Peter and, and the disciples were saying in Acts. And mind you, when they're saying that they're getting beaten, they're getting thrown in prison. We're not going through none of these things yet. And then we've been in Scriptures because we want to keep a friendship. A friendship, really, when when you really examine it, it's 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 a fake friendship, right? Because the friendship, the true friendship that the believers in Christ had towards one another was based upon who? Christ. It was based upon the apostle doctrine. And anyone outside of that that didn't want to deal in that fashion, well, we can't stop you. You know, you want to go after the world, but I'm not going out there with you, right? So we'll end there. Lord willing, we'll continue this um more scriptures that we didn't get to cover today next Sabbath. But we'll end. Let's uh, read Numbers 10 and 10, seeing that we're in the midst of the new moon Sabbath when the sun went down today. At the going down of the sun, we uh, entered into the second Sabbath. Now we're into the new moon Sabbath, the first day of the first month. So as we're going to read in the scriptures, it's a, it's a high day, right? A lot of people in this world, they don't observe the... Uh, Feast of the new moon. They don't acknowledge it as a Sabbath day, but according to the scriptures, it's one of those days that's it's a special day. It's not an ordinary day, right? And then we, similar to the all the Sabbaths of the Most High, they're high holy days, days of, of restraint, days of solemnity, right? So which means 
We're not to do work upon the Sabbath or engage in business. The only difference outside of the seventh day Sabbath, we're able to cook. So when it, when it comes to Exodus 35 and 3, where we're not to um, kindle a fire for the purpose of cooking, that's limited to the seventh day Sabbath. But the other high holy days that may fall outside of the seventh day Sabbath, that's the only thing we're able to do as far as the cooking, which we're not to do on the seventh day Sabbath. But when it comes to resting, when it comes to um, refraining from work, buying and selling, and then also it's a holy convocation, those aspects of the commandments we're supposed to observe. So let's read it here in um, Numbers, the 10th chapter, verse 10. And we'll also read uh, Psalms 81. It says, Also in the day of your gladness, and in your solemn days, and in the beginnings of your months. So the Most High was given the priests, the priests being the, the sons of Levi, that was one of the um, the, the functions. The Most High gave them the silver trumpet when you read the, the beginning of the chapter uh, for the purpose of calling of assembly, right? Be it, you know, danger coming towards the city, the trumpet is being blown to warn the people, but then also to in when it comes to the high days, that's what we're reading here. The high days being high holy days, according to the scriptures. That's what the day of gladness is going into. Because it's days of joy, rejoicing, feasting. But feasting in the Lord, not feasting in wickedness. This is solemn days, so days of restraint, solemnity. And in the beginnings of your months. So it's, it's, it's letting us know. The beginning of every month being the first day of every month is just as important, right? It's just as, as a high day as the seventh day Sabbath or the Passover or the day of atonement right? or the Feast of Tabernacles. It says, you shall blow with the trumpets over your burnt offerings and over the sacrifices of your peace offerings. So that aspect as far as those statutes pertaining to the high days when it comes to blowing the trumpets over the burnt offerings. And the sacrifices of the peace offerings, we no longer under that because we're under the, when it comes to the uh, sacrifices for burnt offerings, we're under the priesthood of Christ. And Christ replaced that by presenting his body once and for all as Israel's true sacrifice. Right? But when it comes to the latter part of the verses we're going to read, that they may be to you for a memorial before your God. So when something is a memorial, you keep it in, in remembrance, right? It's something that's not to, to go past us and we forgot about it. Just as you read in Exodus 20, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. So all the Sabbath days, including the high holy day, I mean, the, the, the beginning of our months, right? Being the new moon, we're supposed to, to keep that in remembrance and know that what? This is a special day. This is a high day. And it's a day to refrain from all our works and labors. And also as we read in the high holy days, it's a holy convocation, which is the purpose of us coming together tonight in observance of the, the Sabbath. And the latter part of the verse is, I am the Lord, your God. So whose commandment is that? Is, it, is this Moses' commandment or the Most High's commandment? The Most High's commandment. See, it was given unto Moses to teach it unto the children of Israel, but it did not come from Moses. Right? So when people try to say that, they try to make it where... And when you really think about something like that is, well, even, so you, you saying basically when Israel did it, that was a commandment of Moses. <laughs> Where you read in the scriptures at a time also I said, do the commandments of Moses, but then later on, don't do it. No, it was never the commandments of Moses from the beginning, right? But people sometimes say it in ignorance and others say it in where, like we read in the scriptures, they fools, you know. It's sports for them when it comes to dealing in the wants of sin. And they try to justify it by trying to twist the scriptures, but we know better. So let's read one more, Psalm 81, and then we'll end the lesson for tonight. So Psalms 81 and 3. One minute to get it. So it says, Blow up the trumpet in the new moon. In the time appointed on our solemn feast day. So when we read as far as blowing the trumpet over the the the, uh, the sacrifices, 
So that aspect of it, we no longer under those statutes. But when it comes to the observance of the no moon, we're right in the scriptures, it's a memorial. Because the Most High, he's the one that established it as a high day. Right? And it says, in the new moon. So the new moon, right, is going into the phase of the moon when it's at its darkest point, in the beginning of the month, the first day of the month. And so we're not talking the middle of the moon uh, of the month, right? The 15th day, right? We're talking about the new moon, not the full moon, right? So don't let someone kind of come with a, a doctrine that is based from man and then have us in, in, uh, observe the new moon Sabbath on the wrong day. Right? So the phase of the moon that we're supposed to observe at the high holy day is the new moon, right? The first day of the month. That's why a lot of the middle reading on said, in the time appointed. Who's appointing the time for, for the day of the new moon to be observed as a high day? The most high, not man, right? So we're not going by eleven of men of traditions of men. Right? The, the moon is 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 it's fully bright. Right? We at the phase where we've already passed the new moon and then now you're trying to observe the new moon. We're almost fifteen days late. And if you get the new moon late, right, we know all the high holy days is based off knowing what the first day of the moon of the month is, right? So how we get to the Passover 14th day at even if you didn't even get the first day right? So your Passover is going to be wrong. You know, all the high holy days every month of the year is going to be wrong, right? You get into this last month, right, when we observe the memorial of blowing of the trumpets of the first day of the seventh month. If you got that wrong, then 10 days later, you're going to get, you know, Day of Atonement wrong. And then you're going to get the 15 days later, the, the, the um, Feast of Tabernacles wrong, right? And it's going to be a snowball effect. You always, throughout the whole year, you're keeping a wrong Sabbath. Right? So we have to make sure that we're keeping these commandments according to how the Most High through Christ has revealed them unto us, not according to how men is twisting the scriptures to promote themselves. And so... The latter part of verse 3 says, on our solemn feast day. So whose feast day is it? The Most High's feast day. So if we're going to keep it and and keep it in, as a memorial in observance of the Most High's feast day, well, let's make sure we do it according to the scriptures, according to the written word, and not according to man's leaven. So verse 4, for this was a statute for Israel and a law of the God of Jacob. See, so that's one of the many commandments that we're supposed to be in remembrance of. So when we read in in in, in um, Exodus twenty in regards to remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy, well, all the Sabbath days, right? That's why in in um, Numbers ten it mentions in in the days of our gladness and the feasting days, and also what in the beginnings of the months. See, so we're not to exclude the new moon. So some people are like, wait, no, nah, that's not a high day. Yes, yes, it is because we read here there was a statute for Israel. And a law of the God of Jacob, right? And it's to the point where just as the Sabbath day, the, the Passover is as important for us to remember it, the scriptures even mention that what? Even in the kingdom, the new moon is going to be observed, right? It tells us that in Isaiah 66. So see, that's not something to make light of. So if that's it, we'll end there. We'll, we'll, we'll end with a prayer. I'll praise the Heavenly Father in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth for the Sabbath days and for allowing us to come together in the observance of the Sabbath day in the right spirit. So we'll end with a prayer and then we'll do the Lord's communion. So let's rise and meditate in the prayer. I read a song. Read Psalms 130. Out of the depths have I cried unto thee, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let thine ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. If thou, Lord, shouldest mark iniquities, O Lord, who shall stand? But there is forgiveness with thee, that thou mayest be feared. I wait for the Lord, my soul doth wait, and in his word do I hope. My soul waiteth for the Lord more than they that watch for the morning. I say, more than they that watch for the morning. Let Israel hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is mercy, and with him is plenteous redemption. And he shall redeem Israel from all from all his iniquities. Our praise the Heavenly Father in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth for our coming together in observance of the Sabbath. 
and that you may have mercy upon all the saints, upon all the believers, and that you may heal us of all our sins, transgressions, sicknesses, illness, infirmities, and that you may deliver us in due time. In Christ's name we pray and believe. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Amen. Amen. All right, Israel, peace and blessings. At this time, we'll uh, get ready to do the Lord's Communion. So, brothers and sisters, more than welcome to do it with us. Just give us a moment to get the bread, the bread and the wine ready. So, bless Sabbath to everyone. Bless New Moon. the day for us to be refreshed from all our labors. Beauty of the double Sabbath. <laughs> also, I know it's good for us. What's that? Yeah. The man, man in their wickedness, we'll find something to do every day. And we'll wear ourselves out and end up uh, shortening our lives before the time. years old and be looking like 60, 70. You know, the Sabbath is uh, symbolic of the true rest. So we're going to be resting from all our works and labors every day in Christ's kingdom. Lord willing. So that's the hope of our forefathers. Got to worry about some of us may work, some of us could take it off, and be in a wicked world. All right, I'll read Matthew 26 26. Where Christ established this ordinance as he kept the Passover with his disciples on the night that he was to be taken to be killed as Israel's Passover land. This is Matthew 26, 26. It's, uh, pay attention. Says, and as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remissions of sins. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until that day. Right? So that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. So that's the day that we're supposed to all be in anticipation of, and which is a reflection of how we live our life, like we read today. Constantly being that example, you know, walking in that, that light, Christ being the light, right? And our examples is is as we do this ordinance daily, it's an acknowledging that the bread is symbolic of Christ's body, and as we read the wine, it's symbolic of 
the blood that he, sh he shed on the cross, his blood, and bringing forth the New Testament. Right? So by his blood we say, which is of grace and mercy. And with that grace and mercy, scriptures tell us that what? Faith without works, right? Is dead being alone. So Christ didn't have faith in the Most High without the works to back it. Right? And so scriptures let, tell us in um, Corinthians 11, we're supposed to eat the bread and the wine as far as partaking the Lord's communion, which is common union between the Most High through Christ with his, with his people, the believers. We're supposed to eat and drink it at wine as far as keep this ordinance worthily. Worthily means as we're walking in the spirit of the Most High Christ. And if we're not doing so, as we read today in the last scripture we read in Corinthians, the fifth chapter, well, who's going to judge those? That's without the Most High. All right, so let's end with a prayer. Ask the Most High through Christ and bless his bread and his wine. Let's meditate in the prayer. The Heavenly Father and the Spirit, in the, the Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we ask and pray. That you bless our bread and our wine, which represents the body and the blood of our Lord. This we do in remembrance of you until your second coming. Thank you. Amen. Amen. All right, Israel. Happy New Moon. Sabbath to everyone. Happy New Moon. My Christ and family. Keeping you all in prayer. Most High's mercy, healing, deliverance. Let's see uh, who else is on here. I think I've seen. Sharon Creek more earlier. Peace and blessings to you, sis. Your household as well. Brother Hearn. Out of Israel. Israel, Virginia. Peace and blessings to you and your house. Happy New Moon. Appreciate brothers and sisters partaking in the lesson today. To Christ bless you, your homes, your families. Look forward to seeing y'all at some point. As far as brothers out of state, sisters, families, all households, but we're together in the spirit. That's all that matters. All right. well, we'll enjoy the rest of the Sabbath and uh, have a blessed upcoming week as well. I love you all, keeping everyone in prayer. Also, I bless the church. Shalom. Peace and blessings.